Monaco Pizza presents SCP. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle and Adam Wilde. Well, well, well. Well. Half the summer gone. Oh, don't say it like that. How are you going to start a show? A positive. You're you're going to start it on a positive note, and you're going to say that half the summer's. Over. I saw a back to school ad before oh, I, was I came say, here. I thought and I was I thought, furious. Isn't it about time for back to school? No. Yeah. It's no. I think it is. It's absolutely. I not. think I am. I am desperately low on stilos. No, it's, sir. It is a uh, listen. First of all, French <laughs> Habs fan who just sneezed <laughs> twice. Listen. <laughs> I don't need to hear about your stilos. It's a month that starts with J. I don't want to hear about back to school. Shut up with the sneezes! <laughs> I don't know why I'm sneezing, Wait, it's man. Wait, a month? It, you mean month? January also exists, though? Okay. Yeah, and that's not back to... Jesse, listen! <laughs> <laughs> all right? First of all, welcome back to you as well! <laughs> what was it like having no one to give shit to for two weeks? It was hard! What was it like <laughs> having to have hard. nice discourses and interactions with people that I were don't. just kindness? What was that? It was terrible, Yeah, and I'm glad that we're back. It's good to be back. Yeah. It's good Hi to be guys. back. I just think that there are other months that start with J, uh-huh. like January. I shouldn't say other month. There's another month that yeah. starts with J. That's great. That has nothing to do with back to school. Oh, with your whataboutisms, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> what about January? <laughs> Jesse would have been a great propaganda minister in the Soviet Union. He is. That's you know, I think he is. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse's yeah. a Russian agent. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's what it is. That's what it is. And he would be number 25 on the top 50 <laughs> Russian agents yeah. of all time. But maybe the key was had a gobble jack. That's wild! According to a guy. A guy! A guy! <laughs> <laughs> Big deal! Imagine Elliot Friedman came out with a list of the top 50 oh, Canadian arguments. Oh, and people would be like, uh, but Elliot, what the, are you ranking it on? What is this based on, <laughs> Elliot? Nothing. No reply. No. Just, here's you my know what, Adam? I agree. No one has written anything <laughs> ever. <laughs> You're right. No one has ever tried to do a top players list in sports. That is preposterous. Shut up! We're doing a show! You're a broadcaster! <laughs> oh, we get off the radio and you can just cough and hack your brains out because it's the food. podcast and it's not a big deal. Oh, we're back back with the riffraff on the podcast. <laughs> You're just I, done. If this is back with the riffraff on the podcast, th- th- I was on the radio with the riffraff too. Like it wasn't, it's not that different. Oh, with your whataboutisms. Adam. Yeah, really. Were you coughing on the fan? Uh, I did. I, there's a cough button. So I used it a couple so times. So this is the riffraff. But like, we have okay, no cough button. So you know the night that we recorded our last the show that was three hours. It was a very long time. Three ago. weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. The, the tomorrow. The <laughs> next day, that, that night I knew I was getting sick. The next day was like the uh, uh, like being kicked in the face. Mm. It, and for the next five days, from that Wednesday to that Sunday, I did not leave my house. So you had a I really good well, start to your vacation, except for the dogs to pee. And I couldn't walk them. It was like I was so so. You just bring them up. So then, us. so when you have a cold like that, then you spend the next week recovering from it, right? Because you got all the other shit that comes out of you afterwards. Oh, and God, uh, welcome back, everybody. We're anyway, the Steve Dangle podcast. So this is for- the first like week and a half where I've actually been healthy. Where you could you ever like be like, man? I take breathing through my nose for granted. Oh, like, I miss it. Yeah, I miss it. You ever forget how to do it? You know, the, the first time I ever sat up and thought. I am never going to take being healthy, fully healthy for granted again is when yeah. I had E. coli. Uh, you ever had E. coli? No. It's like somebody's taking your intestines and twisting them around their arm. Bet and you didn't think this is where the show so was going. It, yeah, seriously. So I was like, okay, I will never take this for granted again because that was also a, a, a harrowing, awful experience. And I can remember vividly when I had mono thinking the same thing. You're just lying on the couch like, uh, salads and vitamins. <laughs> That's going to be me. I'm going to I'm not thinking anymore. <laughs> Violent and vitamins. <laughs> and then you I can be an Olympic swimmer. <laughs> Sorry. Some True. people have like really serious cases of mono too. I've oh heard yeah. Like mono being misdiagnosed as like cancer to that point. Well, it, it, what? There, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had a. I've sorry, had, go I had well one friend who that happened to, and for a whole semester she thought she had cancer, and then by the end of it they were like, "No, you just have mono." Wow. Like, wow. Yeah, because her mono was that serious. They thought she was like. On the verge of dying. So it was scary. Jeez. Uh, Roger yeah. Federer took, a, took a dip Roger in the Federer. prime of his career. Yeah. And nobody knew why. They're like, oh, he just fell off. 
And and then they realize six months in, oh, you've had mono this entire time. Just randomly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because what happens is that you get the, when I say cold and flu symptoms of mono, if you get them at all, I, I mean like whatever cold and flu you've had times a thousand. Yeah. It's like somebody is taking a gar- like a metal rake from your garden and running it down your throat at all times. It is the worst. Your neck swells out like you're you're an NFL player. Like it is the worst, worst, worst thing. JJ <laughs> Watt, but yeah, weak. yeah, exactly. JJ <laughs> Watt, but on your couch with terrible breath because your 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 esophagus closes up to a point where you can't really eat anymore, mm. and you've got like this this much left, and then things start to get caught in there, and they rot. It's ah, disgusting. Anyway, mm, enjoy. So you wanted to listen to a hockey podcast in July, did, did you? you? Can you trade mm. Mono for a second round pick? Well, no, you have to you'd include have- Brown and Cabinet. No, Brown and Nielsen. That's too much. <laughs> Brown and Kaepernick, you're nuts. <laughs> you're crazy. Just eating, just eating mid-show. Yeah. Well, with just, with your what yeah. is this? Your fourth job, Adam? I told you I was gonna have a. I was I'm, I I I was on the couch going salads and vitamins. I'm having a piece of yeah. apple. I'm never taking my health for granted ever again. <laughs> vitamins and salads. The second I can breathe through my node. <laughs> your what? Your node. <laughs> Second, I can breathe through my note. I'm gonna have salads and vitamins. So, Sorry. do we talk about the John Tavares? Do we still talk about leave. the fan now, or do we go into what do you think, producer Jesse? Do you think we go into just the the Panarin stuff, or do we? I go, think no. We save the fan I think till later. First, we ask Adam and Jesse Steve, about his dog. Yes, we ask Adam and Steve what they've been doing with, for their three weeks. Besides Adam, you were clearly sick. I was I was sick, yeah. And then, Boring. But then you went on. But then you guys took a little shift on the fan. We did. How was, was that? Bizarre. Um, how did you feel about it? Well, okay. So I, uh, as we discussed before the show began, um, my scheduling skills are poor at best. So I was asked, "Hey, would you like to um, potentially co-host a show on the fan on July nineteenth?" And I said, yes, that sounds like a great idea. Paying no mind to the fact that that was the day after I got back from Scotland. Paying no mind to the fact that that was my anniversary with my wife. Oh, oh yeah. I just decided to go ahead and do that thing. So I'm sitting there and, uh, you know, Adam, Adam, you know, there were a little bit of nerves for you too, I oh think. Oh my God. Yeah, because Huge. like you've done radio, but this is a little different. And, I'm nervous. And but you, you'd think listening to this podcast yeah. that it would be the same. It's not even close. No, you do not like how close. often or how long do you speak at a time on on a show like the Adam Wilde show like on, on Kiss? Kiss? Uh, it was used to be maximum when you and I would go back and forth. Yeah. Sometimes it went as long as three minutes. Yeah, yeah. We'd but get, like, usually three and like half minute breaks. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Usually like four. sixty. Usually sixty to yeah. ninety seconds. Yeah. yeah. Normally you can get any good story out in that time anyway. And sports radio is twenty minute breaks. <laughs> Easily. Or something like that. Well, we had we had Chris Johnston on for 35 minutes, and they're like, normally we don't do 35-minute yeah. interviews, but yeah. it was okay. Hey, <laughs> podcast boys. Yeah. Nice we're, long <laughs> interview, <laughs> podcast boys. We were, used to, we're used to having Chris for 90 minutes. I'm like, <laughs> I still got questions, man. Yeah. We're not done. <laughs> we all like, wow, how do you do it? And I'm like, well, um... Funny thing we about that. Literally, we we wring Chris out yeah. like a like a rag, just wring yeah. him out of all the moisture he has, all the leaf yeah. news. You he join has. your vacation up <laughs> now, Chris. Yeah. Andrew Nye sitting there. I need to do my update. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Andrew Nye, who's got the most radio voice. <laughs> Hi. He's got the he's he, Andrew Nye. If you've never heard him on the fan, has the most professional sounding voice I've ever heard. Also, one of the world's nicest people. Mm-hmm. I'm adding him to the Adam Wild <laughs> world's nicest people list. We you know who's list. on that list? Definitive list. Everyone. Not everyone. No, no, I not, don't think you not said everyone. About anybody? Not Brad everyone. Marchand. Not on that list. No. <gasps> yeah. There's the first one. All right. Yeah. We've reached one on the. <laughs> what's the what, what is the other list called? Uh, uh, well, I mean, Brad Marchand. I think you just there is just the one list, and then you either get a pass to the party or you don't. The list uh. is called Brad Marchand. That's <laughs> 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 just the name of the list. <laughs> is Tom Wilson on? The list? <clears throat> is Tom Wilson you know, Jam? You know. I don't know. I don't know. That's like we're getting sidetracked. <laughs> Is Brad Marchand a like tennis ball? So they, here's the thing. They they uh, Dave Cadeau, who who is the program director, the guy who runs the fan. His name means present in French. Sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he says to me. He says to me, uh, uh, Adam, uh, we're gonna have you come in and host uh, a show. 
with, mm. and we wanted want you to do it with Steve because we know you guys already have built in chemistry. And I said, well, my first reaction was, well, could Jesse be there? And he's like, no, Jesse's working. I'm like, ah, yes, he's employed. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't also, know what that's I, like. one, I don't believe that was your first reaction. <laughs> it actually, I would have said legit. no. It legitimately yes. was. I would have said no. Hey, Tim, Sid, <laughs> how do you feel about not having social media for two days? It would no, well, he still would have been able to do it. I just figured you'd come in a couple hours early and be on the show, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, just the, add to your workload like it's nothing. <laughs> the, the he said no. We just kind of want the two of you. Yeah. He's like two voices is enough. Yeah. Like we need two voices, and uh, and then he uh, uh, and then he said, well, Steve's going to be on, and I said, well, that's suspiciously close to the end of Steve's vacation. He said, yeah, but he said he's good to go. So uh, so yeah, and then and I'm 20- sitting in Glasgow Airport. Like in Scotland, going. I'm on the radio in Toronto tomorrow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm in another country, and I'm on the radio tomorrow. And I was concerned mm. for something. And this mm. is something that I don't think we've ever faced on this show, which is lack of content. You know, we haven't yeah. even gotten to the list of things that we were supposed to get mm-hmm. to already today. Um, and and like the the worry that I had, and the worry that I know that like when Faisal Faisal Kamisa, who friend of the show, and then uh, Donovan Bennett, who was also filling in, you know, for Tim and Sid, I know that they were at the beginning of the week going, "What the hell are we going to talk about?" Because once the home run derby's over and the All Star game's done, there are no games for two nights. Yeah, let's be honest, it was risky <clears throat> having us on, especially me, because like I've never done this, never. Um, but the the reason they do it is it's the dead week. You can talk about whatever the hell you want. Yeah. So I was like, oh, gosh, are we going to have to talk about baseball and basketball and all that? And they're like, no, 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 stick to your strengths. Do some we'll hockey. just do hockey. And imagine my surprise when sitting in Glasgow Airport, the Raptors acquired Kawhi Leonard. Which... <laughs> And I'm like, oh God! <laughs> to put this into context for you, if you're not either, if you're if you're not a fan of a Toronto sports or b basketball in the same way that, like, I'm a fan of basketball, but to say that I know basketball, I don't. That's me. Yeah, yeah. I like the Raptors. I've always liked the Raptors. I've been paying attention forever. But to tell you, I couldn't go into depth like we can go here, right, with hockey. Yeah. And and all of a sudden, in that 24 hour span, you've got to become an expert on Kawhi, Demar. Uh, Danny Green, uh, Pirtle, uh, Masai Ujiri, and his the way he thinks, and your Demar Derozan's Instagram. You're literally eating everything you can online. You're trying to find every damn article you ever could find, every interview, yeah. everything. I crammed for that exam real good. Yeah, and uh, and and thankfully that's how I went through school was cramming exams. So uh, that Kawhi Leonard stuff was awesome. You know, that was that so one? much fun. Adam dropped out. This is not high school though. No, I passed oh, high school. Oh, okay, Squeaked okay. by there. Yeah. <laughs> so did I. Yeah. Continue. I left school because I had better opportunities. Ah. That's why. Wow. Yeah. I did. Wow. I did. Yeah. So. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to be on the radio in Halifax. <laughs> <laughs> Halifax is like made it. up. It's not even real. <laughs> <laughs> so it's definitely we, not one of my favorite places. So, so Travis McKenzie, who's the producer of that show. Amazing. Um, great guy. One great of the guy. nicest people ever. One met. of the nicest yeah. people ever. <laughs> we and, interned at the same time. And he... He puts together the show, and he's like, "Listen, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna put as much hockey in as as we can because you know that's your strength, and that was what you guys should do." Mm-hmm. And I was imagine, you know, what he does with Jeff Blair, who's you know baseball really hey. knows baseball. Yeah. Well. But was what was great is that we actually Jeff Blair had not been on since the Kawhi news, so we had Jeff Blair on his own show. So we talked nice. to him about Kawhi, and then Jeff, you there was a question Steve asked, and I can't remember I... what it was, but it was baseball related because Jeff really knows his baseball. There had recently been a kind of swept under the rug little incident controversy with Marcus Stroman where he like yelled at a Mar- reporter. Marcus Stroman of the Blue Jays, everyone. Yeah, sorry. Mark, uh, we have an international Blue Jays audience. Pitcher. Yep. And he yelled at a reporter or something. So I, I think I alluded to that and that just got Jeff gone. You know? <laughs> ah, Marcus Stroman. He's got to cut the act with the. Okay, I think I referred to him as an underdog. Yes, and he he said you have to cut the under he has to cut the under uh, underdog at yeah, and it was just the perfect example of and another thing like like <laughs> Jeff was so relaxed from his vacation that he forgot he was a grumpy man, <laughs> and I brought up one of the topics that makes him grumpiest, and it just snowballed and and another thing and another thing. And Marcus Stroman needs to stop being a narcissist. He's like whoa, <laughs> he said that with and his mouth. And I looked at each other like. Wow. Okay, that's going on the website later. Yeah, and, and then uh, it did. yeah. So anyway, we we had. I mean, we had a great time. I, I think the first day we didn't get to hockey until the eleven o'clock. And hour. we did twenty minutes, and it was an interview with Mark Crawford. Yeah. <laughs> so we, you know, um, I uh, I kind of I asked all like some of these the, some of the more boring questions about 
why he was in town, which was this. Um, He's doing co- some kind of conference. coaching clinic. Yeah. And Fun. Steve goes, Eric Carlson, because <laughs> yeah. Mark Crawford is an Ottawa Senator coach. <laughs> Listener <laughs> benefit trumps everything, man. You, you got to ask the question. Right. And, and what did you ask? And you said. <laughs> Um. Oh my God! I'm trying to remember you exactly asked, what you I said. About, like, it's it's on a podcast on the website. It was a fair question. Sure it was about, like it wasn't like what's happening there. It was like you know, a player of his cali- caliber. If he doesn't come back, what's the message? Bingo. Because he's he's talking about you know how you get a young team through the season and this and that. And it, I mean, he definitely he sounds like he knows what he's talking about. It's freaking Mark Crawford. Mm-hmm. And so like it, I asked something along the lines of so what happened this year? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and he was. He was a, he, candid. He had a really good answer. So if you want to hear it, you can you can go back and listen to the Jeff Blair Show podcast. Uh, that was just they Thursday. Just, they just take all the hours. That's Thursday, but and we we could have used that as a good transition into the Ottawa. But I did want to talk about Friday too. Um, so that was the Thursday show, and and that was that was good. And and they uh, and Faisal was on like right off the bat, so mm-hmm. that really kind of put us in a comfortable That's spot because right. yep. Faisal knows his basketball in a way that we just don't, yeah. and he is also so personable and so. Our generation. A lot of guys were really good at the the brain aspect of it, which is shut up, you idiots. Kawhi Leonard is the best player in this trade. The Raptors are better, and the the heart part of it, which is oh, but which DeMar, is the fan, yeah. And Faisal did a really good job of blending the two and understood mm-hmm. the two. And then the next day, uh, we we talked to Chris Johnston nine thirty. Um, was it Mike Wilner at 10? Mike yes, Wilner. Yeah. Wilner? Yeah. yeah. And he, was, oh, yeah. He, was, he was awesome. He was <laughs> really cool. great. Like, he was so much fun to talk he, to. He, uh, he led into the Blue Jays taking on the <laughs> Baltimore Orioles. The series everyone wanted to watch. <laughs> what, did he get upset at any point in the interview? No. Because no. he's very good at getting upset. There was a question where he, <laughs> he might as well have gone, why would you ask that? What, like, did he say those words? It, what did I say? Oh, no, it was definitely me, <laughs> not you. Um... Oh, God. It had something to do with... I was basically like, so we're going to the Jays Orioles tomorrow. Mm. What's Why the, should we care? No, I think that was a, a good question. That's a great question. question. That was and he answered it perfectly. Yeah. And, dude, there were like 35,000 people there. Oh, there yeah. were a lot of people there for a Jays the Orioles Jay, game. The thing about the Jays is they're not terrible. They're not the Orioles. No. I think they're still 16 games above the Orioles. Yes. Which is ridiculous. The Orioles are, the Orioles are pretty bad. bad. So, yeah, there's still a but reason to watch Jays baseball. Wilner yeah, put it, for now. made a good point, and he said if you took all the games of uh, the Blue Jays against the Sox and the Blue Jays against the Yankees, he's like, I realize this is dumb and you can't do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you were to t- throw out those 38 games, the Jays are a, an above 500 team. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, only okay. six games under right now. Yeah, it's so. per, it's perspective, right? Yeah. And and it let's is. be honest, the Yankees and Sox are <laughs> monsters again, and that's just what it is. Um, the uh, 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 I thought Eric Engels was awesome. He we, so we basically called in every favor we could, right? right. Talk Habs, like, yeah. Yeah, we're like, can we, we, Eric? Can we talk to you? Chris, can we talk to you? Faisal, can mm-hmm. we talk to you? And uh, Bunkus, JD Bunkus, uh, texted me as well, and on his he's off like, day. on his off day. He came we back. just bugged fan hosts on their off day. <laughs> yeah, he he came back early to actually record a, a free association, which is one of the oh, okay. Sportsnet basketball podcasts. He did that with DJ with Donovan, and, and his Kawhi episode was real good. It was, it was yeah. awesome. Him and and, Donovan, uh, yeah. and then so he came on with us, and and one of the things that um, Steve asked, and again, your your questions were phenomenal. Was Thank how would you, you as an outsider? Because rare JD <laughs> JD's from uh, the Yukon. I just blacked out. I, I didn't remember asking it, any of it. <laughs> JD's right. from the Yukon, and he said, "So as an outsider, how would you uh, sell Kawhi in Toronto? How would you sell Kawhi in Toronto? What would you say about the city?" And I'm not even going to pre- attempt to try the answer. Listen to the podcast. The answer is phenomenal. It's really great. If you're if you're from Toronto, especially given what happened on the Dan Forth last night. Um, It'll make you so proud of the city that somebody f- from outside of here would, would say something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, because, you know, we are our own harshest critics. And we also have, you know, the, the west side of the country and the east side of the country and the center of the country that doesn't like us very much. So, well, and Toronto it, within Canada is Toronto, damn it. And Toronto within North America is like, oh, gosh, guys, I sure hope you like us. <laughs> I, I know the subway is not that good, but like we got nice food on King Street and stuff. And Shazam shot a commercial here. Did you see this one? No. They did a promo for I don't know, some new Shazam show or something. <gasps> oh, and oh they Shazam? Shot, yeah. The that. Jamie Foxx one? Yeah, so they shot the uh, the trailer on the TTC. Oh. And the best part is 
for the bo- the backdrop, they had to they fake the uh, the subway plans because they j- and they added to the TTC because it had to look like a major city. So they had to add <laughs> they had to add lines onto the TTC's actual subway map to make it more realistic because our subway uh, is for, not real. I'm sorry. Context: yeah. If you've never lived here, um, there are entire sections of our city that are completely cut off by transit. Yeah. Just look uh, up Toronto <laughs> transit system. It is. It was. It was fantastic about 55 years ago, yeah. and then it became out of date. I, wish we had the fake Shazam one in the yes, trailer. Yes. It'd be a lot better. I've told this story before. I'll tell it again real briefly. I was outside Union Station and there was this family visiting Toronto from Spain and they were looking at a map and, and confused and they called me over and they were asking for my help and they're like, is, is this is this it? Basically with the subway? And I, <laughs> and I go, yeah. And they like, they look back at the map and they talk in Spanish to each other and then he looks at me and he goes, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't believe how shitty Europe, it is. Europe is all trains, man. Yeah, yeah. And, and it we makes got a lot more nothing. sense. <laughs> we got one line that kind of goes through the middle, and then another one that hooks kinda through goes the up. center, <laughs> and then two kind of on the side, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> and then Ma you can get buses. to <laughs> Scarborough Town Center if you really, really want to. Yeah. And by the way, the entire thing is three dollars. <laughs> you want to go one stop? It's three dollars. You want to go the entire damn line? It's three dollars. But was if a- you get off. You got to pay another $3. $3. Uh, $3. <laughs> that's, my, that's my favorite part is that, like, so one of the things that... I, when I went is, to London in 2012, I was like, oh, that's how trains work. I was going to bring <laughs> that up. So, well, well, and, and well, that's the thing, right? The Oyster Pass. You get it in the mail. They send it to your house. Yeah. It's preloaded. And I remember um, uh, somebody telling me about how the Leafs were switching from every, every ticket costs the same to, and I forget what they call it, but it's basically... A Tuesday night game against, let's say, and sorry, with ex, you know, excuse us, Columbus, get, Columbus, Arizona, St. Louis, something like that. It's not a big draw. Not a not a divisional rival. We'll say not necessarily because everything's a big draw here. But your 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 ticket prices are going to go down for something like that on a Tuesday versus say Montreal Canadiens, Toronto Maple Leafs Saturday. That night. makes perfect sense. And so they make a lot more money doing it that way, which is sort of how it works in London too. It's it's you you swipe in. Yeah. And then you don't pay till you get off because it's based on how many stops you went to. And if you don't pay when you get off, like they got uh, the, <clears throat> I was going to call them the go cops. I don't know what they would call them there. I don't know. It's Oyster, not go transit. Oyster cops. Oyster cops. And they'll bust you. Oh, yeah. They'll bu- I saw Transit it. police. Transit ah, police. Is the word Special constables. For. Thank you. <laughs> Great producing. Here. High five. <laughs> All right. That was the worst high five. On I know what I was good. doing. <laughs> so anyway, uh, 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 I don't know where we were going, but the fact yeah. of the matter was. I'm having fun. <laughs> Anyone else having fun? I'm just, I'm, we're just catching where up, man. We, where did we you go You thought I was going to be tired. Ah! The fan. Oh, yeah. So you're Friday. So we were finishing that Friday off. Friday was, so I want to thank... Personally, yeah. CJ, JD, Eric, uh, Mike Wilner, who we don't know, uh, but he's he was very nice, and and it was just like it was it was great, and and I think we got Matt more Devlin. comfortable as it happened. Martin, yeah, Matt, Matt Devlin, Devlin. Yeah. yeah, we met Devlin, yeah, yeah. he was awesome. Raptors play, play by play boys, yeah. And I said for the next year, he has the most fun job in the country. Oh yeah, oh. the Raptors are going to be a story every night. Yes, it's it's going to be so much fun. They're already saying Raptors Spurs Christmas Day game. <sighs> Not going to happen, but fun. How great would that be, though? Oh. It should. It should be like you Lakers, can't, Warriors, you Raptors, can't split Spurs. the ratings like that. I don't know. Mm. I don't think they'd ever do it. Yeah, it's, it's why the yeah. It's why Canada doesn't have an NFL team. Yeah, the rating. Because there's no local rating in you're in a different country. So, mm. I don't know. Weird. We'll see. Maybe. Well, hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, <laughs> anyway, however it goes, it's very, very interesting. And, you know, I, I think there was a lot of people right away, and this is where we're actually get to the sports. Thanks, everyone. Um, mm. that, that instantaneously... Stalin. In this town. Yeah, we should talk about Scotland, but we'll do that later. Um, <laughs> instantaneously wanted to compare <laughs> Tavares and Kawhi Leonard. And I have to tell you, there is no comparison. Yeah, I'm the biggest hockey fan there is, and come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, not only is the sport it's not, bigger, it's not there. <laughs> the player, <laughs> we're, you're talking about a player of, who are the best three players in the NHL? Who are the uh, best five? Crosby, McDavid. No, no, no. Uh, uh, these are just a, a pool of five. It's no. It, it yeah, no we're not right. So no, 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 uh, no, but let's rank it based on nothing. <laughs> <laughs> let's do that, guys. Okay, Crosby, <laughs> McDavid, Malkin, Zaitsev. Um, <laughs> Wait, Kovalchuk is coming back. There. <laughs> no, but you got Crosby, McDavid, uh, Malkin. Ovi. Ovi. Yeah. Um, See, I don't know if I'd put Ovi top five. 
okay. Carey Price when he's Jovers. Yeah, they may be top five. Let's yeah, say no? not goalies. Let's okay. say not goalies. Players because it's hard to rank goalies Can't, and players on the same list. Pretty tough to do. Pretty It'd be kind of hard if there's no criteria. <laughs> Taylor Hall's the reigning MVP, and we haven't considered haven't him. talked about yeah. him. But you know, you know, you get the idea, right? Yeah. yeah. Kawhi Leonard is a. Crosby, Malkin, McDavid type player. We're not questioning him in the top five. No, it's unquestioned. He yeah. is the fr- he is among the first three names you have. He's up there with now. LeBron's on his own level, but like you put what LeBron, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, James Harden, James Harden, Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi, yeah, probably. So good you know how five. we overuse generational talent. LeBron James is generational talent because another tier. Then you go the rest of the best players. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, once in a generation. That's what it means. But we, I don't know. There's like Only, six guys yeah. who are generational. <laughs> Oliver Ekman Larson. Like, okay, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> All star, Olympian, incredible yeah. player, generational talent. Are you high? Sorry. <laughs> no, there's there's an importance to differentiating between superstar yeah. and then a next generational. level alien who Matthews, shouldn't be playing the sport. Yeah. Nylander, Marner, Tavares, all, all generational. <laughs> no. No, you can't have four at the same time on the same team. Unless you're the Warriors. Unless you're the Warrior. Draymond which, Green. Which isn't even generational a talent. Boogie Cousins. Yeah. Generational talent. <laughs> I wouldn't even put Steph Curry in a generational talent thing. No, he's, he does what he does he's, well. He's a superstar. Yeah. He's still not Durant though. Close? Probably yes. Probably like Durant's if, probably a top ten player. If of LeBron all time. doesn't exist, if LeBron's wow. parents never meet, Durant's the best player in the league. <laughs> it's right. Yeah, it's, it's no. subject. Right now, the best player in the league is LeBron, and then probably James Harden, just because of the season oh, he's at. Yeah, he had an incredible and year. just the position he plays. Because yep. I don't, I don't think Durant could ever be a point guard. No, his, true. His, Good point. But I don't know. Yes, generational. Kind um, of so superstar. so. so <laughs> In, in, and in, with no disrespect to John Tavares, who is a... A superstar. Superstar. Yes. <laughs> there is no comparison. What an insult. And, and, and there was a <laughs> lot of the... And Faisal alluded to this. There was a lot of the please like my sports out there. Oh, yeah. And I don't understand... Wait, Tor- from, from what? <coughs> well, Twitter. Wait, oh. on which side? Both sides. Oh, uh, I was about to say, yeah. like, uh, there was some basketball. Yeah, there was a lot uh, of basketball. Uh, come on. I'm not blaming, I'm not blaming oh, okay. on either side. I think it's both sides are guilty, yeah. As, yeah. Yeah, as is usually the case with Twitter. Yeah. Usually both sides are guilty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so the no, I think one side is always right ah, on Twitter. NBA won with this one. Wait, <laughs> like you can actually change people's minds. I've been hearing. Ah, the yes. new thing. <laughs> Adam and Jesse. <laughs> oh my god. Think Are I'm stupid? No, no, I'm distracting from the conversation. The, I I'm trying to change people's bad <laughs> bad opinions, and they make fun of me for it, <laughs> rather than encourage me for trying to do the right thing. Um, Listen, if I want to waste my time, I'll do it. So um, there's no comparison. There is no comparison. And by the way, that's okay. Yeah. It's totally okay. How about it's great? Yeah. So here's the thing. And I, I, I alluded to this. With, we, we talked about it on our first, first break on the fan. Um, three years ago. Three years ago. The Jays hadn't made the playoffs in 23 years. Like just prior to the David Price trade. Yeah, this is just, yeah. and that's when we went on air. Just pri- b- prior to the Price trade, TFC had uh, was either either had to four or just lost them. Did you hear that clip? No. He, so Adam's going through the list mm. of of he's going through the list that well, he's no, currently no, going through. You're, you're confusing clips. Oh, but, am I? Yeah. Okay, sorry. We'll uh, but it. I did call Jermaine Defoe, Jermaine Dupree <laughs> later on. Oh, no. he, called, <laughs> he called him Jermaine Dupree, <laughs> and Faisal, <laughs> Faisal and I just. Like, both looked at each other because I knew he had made a mistake and surely was not referring to Lil Bow Wow's producer. But I couldn't think of who he was talking about. And then Faisal, thank goodness, goes, Jermaine Defoe. Yeah. And I go, oh, right, right, bloody big deal. Yeah, yeah, did, yeah. Did people call you out for it? Oh, yeah. It was oh, funny. And he then, had a so, bad time. And then our technical producer, Derek, was like, he put Welcome to Atlanta on to <laughs> lead us into the next break. Amazing. So, funny story about that. Oh. Now everything kind of makes more sense. I was downstairs in the newsroom. Uh oh. And someone was like, and then he started talking about Jermaine Dupree. And it, they must have been talking about you. Yeah. And I must have overheard the ah! conversation about your brain. Were, were they hating our shit? I don't I don't I had no context of what this was conversation it, was, but I heard something bring up Jermaine Dupree. <laughs> and I guess they're Ima- referring to you. Imagine why screwing else would up. About that? Uh, <laughs> imagine screwing up. It's happened to me once. That was or twice. such a good one. So um I forget where we're going. 
Uh, uh, you were listing off three uh, years, three ago. years ago. Toronto three was in the shit so, hole. <laughs> so Blue Jays hadn't made the playoffs in 23 years, and they were 51 and 50 when they got David Something Price. Like they that, were, yeah. And then they one went on a ridiculous like 15 game winning streak. Whatever. TFC had never made the playoffs. Uh, Leafs made the playoffs once in that in that. It was 2013, period. and I choose to believe it never happened. This is yeah, <laughs> and and the Raptors had been had been knocked out twice, once by Brooklyn, and then swept the next year by the Wizards. Mm-hmm. And now here we are, three summers later, talking about Kawhi Leonard, who at that point was the Finals MVP. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then John Tavares, who on that same season lost the Art Ross race. The last day of the season, and it was won by who, Steve Dangle? Jamie Benn. That's right, with how many points? 87. That's right. And I know because I got that wrong on air, and Adam got it right. Yeah, well, because I prepared it. Um, So that's, the the difference in the last three years in Toronto sports is enormous. Like, if you're a New York or a Boston sports fan, you can't relate to this. It's always big for you. Do you want to list off what happened in the meantime? Like, in between three years ago and now? Sure, we can. Because yeah, there's in uh, two ALCS visits by the Jays. Yep. Yep. Uh, Raptors making the Eastern Conference Finals. Conference Final, yeah. Plus uh, three two. more playoff appearances. Raptors, two. Two more. Eastern Conference, Eastern, and, plus then, two more. and then two second They've made it to at least the second round yeah, two every second time, round. I think. Leafs, back to, Leafs, number one overall pick, and then back-to-back playoff appearances. Yep. Mm-hmm. And TFC and won Tavares. the damn championship. And went to After the finals. going to the final the year After before. After the finals yeah. in between. And then, so, went, went, and then went to the, the uh, CONCACAF final, too. And yes, lost. And, and, lost and should Mexico. not have lost. They, they, that team in Mexico. Yeah. They for sure should have won that. Yeah. Hmm. But it was... Anyway, anyway it's, it's been a the Argos, good couple of years. Good Ar- Argos won the Grey Cup. Who cares? I think. Argos oh, yeah. won last, <laughs> Who cares? Last uh, October. November, they won the Great Cup. That's been ah. a, f- a few people pushed back at that, and people were like, "And the Wolf Pack and the Argos <laughs> and people from outside of Toronto are like, shut up." The Marlies, the Marlies. Ca- <laughs> the, I would argue the we Marlies. We need to have Sid Sixero come on to talk about the Marlies. I would argue. That, does he not care? Dude, you were okay, there. I sat down. Oh, I yes, sat down I near the desk that. to like say hi to my friend Jesse. And, and, and Sid, I know the trigger. And so. Sid, for, oh yeah, and Jesse said like <laughs> pineapple good. or something, and Sid turned around and just goes, the Calder Cup doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> and like, wasn't like, hi Steve, like we're having a friendly conversation, just looked at me like the next words out of his mouth were going to be knives, mm-hmm. and he was just like, who cares? Who cares about the Calder <laughs> Cup? It doesn't matter. You think those guys care? They don't care. <laughs> I'm just like, Jesus man, I'm just trying to say hi to Jesse. They kind of seemed like they cared. I mean, it seems like a pretty big deal. (laughs) They don't care. It's a disgrace. (laughs) And then we tried to rank the championships that would be more important than, and we started going, the KHL championship is more important than the AHL championship. Stanley Cup's the only one that matters. (laughs) Just like, why are you being so confrontational with me? I feel like that's Sid's way of, uh, like, I don't think, if he didn't like you, he wouldn't engage. Yeah. (laughs) But it wasn't even fiery, Sid. It was just... Listen, imbecile. For <laughs> matter of fact, you imbecile, you idiot, for liking the Calder Cup. <laughs> Go away forever. I hate you. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, your dogs are ugly. Uh, the, the Calder Cup sucks. <laughs> 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 but can your dog pick playoff predictions? <laughs> yes, but only with in the right hand, because. <laughs> I am a dastardly, no good doer person who rigs playoff pools for dogs. I just want to. We've say covered this. a lot of ground, guys. Yeah, yeah, so I think and, 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 and that was the and Friday. Zero it was ground good at all. So that was the Friday. That was good Friday. first show back. It was a good show. Yeah, so it was fun. We yeah. had a lot of fun. Let me say this: <laughs> there are a lot of people that listen to a lot of sports radio, and I see them come up on Twitter. And these are people that write. These are people that also broadcast and do podcasts and do all sorts of other things. And they're very, very hard on people that do sports radio. And I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> Are you? It's, <laughs> I'm, no, I'm going to tell you something. We've directly. never done that. I've done it too. Mike Frances is great. I'm, I've done it too. No, I was. Gonna, I was going to say. It, I'm shocked that sports people are difficult and oh. they take things a little too serious. No. Sports oh. people might be the most difficult. <laughs> no. Let me just say anyway. this: it's a lot harder than it looks. Okay, and if 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 certain sports personality, like, do we ever go hard at Mark Mike Francesa for not knowing hockey? No, no, we don't make fun of him for that. We make fun of him because he's Mike and he does crazy Google Mike it. shit. And that's, and that's yeah. why Mike gets paid the big bucks because everybody yeah. listens for the crazy Mike shit. Yeah. Nobody's like Mike. You don't know the New Jersey Devils. Go fuck yourself. No one says that. Uh, well, some people well, say Well, some it. people, but they're dumb. The point is... Oh, well, fair distinction, the Adam The point Wilde. is, sometimes broadcasters make mistakes. Yeah. Sometimes they don't know the sport as well as you do. Sometimes they say things you disagree with. And oh. I have to tell you, 
on a radio show, you really got to think on your feet. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, here, even though we really never do, we could always go back and go, well, I, I didn't mean that or change, you know, change that or whatever. On the radio, once you said it, it's out. It didn't help that I was getting live texts from Mrs. Dangle. Oh, really? Hey, hey, hey f- good good start. And then Faisal's on. Oh, that was so good. And then the next segment was baseball, and she's like, Where, where'd you go? <laughs> <laughs> You're not talking. Adam carried the baseball stuff. You should put your phone on silent. Yeah, why were you it answering wasn't on text? silent? I, phone text. Over. I wasn't looking on Twitter. <laughs> I don't like, know, man. No, you know, I didn't want to hear from the sports fans. was texting fans. the whole time? No, not during you know the show. Like, breaks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I kept going to the bathroom because I, I just chugged a bunch of water mm. beforehand. Because I didn't, stay hydrated. Yeah, so I... Uh, I could, went to the bathroom like seven times. Every commercial break, I went to the bathroom. Uh, anyway, uh, just go a little easier on them, okay? Mm-hmm. I mean, it, us, it was our first couple days, so we were a little, like, unstable. So, but I feel like if... if I, I understand there being a completely wrong opinion that's lazy... I understand going in on someone totally. about that. However, if someone screws up and says William du- or J- J- uh, Jermaine Dupree instead of Jermaine <laughs> Defoe, maybe go easy on them. <laughs> and actually, people did. Did you get it? No. Or? One okay, guy okay. actually, I got a couple of Jermaine Dupree gifts. Nice. Which was funny. Mm-hmm. Like, people were, it was really funny. No, it wasn't was a like, you idiot. No. Um, I had a very brief moment at the end of Thursday's show where I was like, oh, I'm so proud of myself for getting through that. And then <laughs> it was quickly followed up by, oh, I got to do another show tomorrow. <laughs> Like, imagine doing <laughs> five straight days of shows. That How sounds long? hard. Did you guys do nine to noon? Yeah, uh, nine to noon. So nine we did three noon. hours, which is really two hours, right? Because yeah. of commercial breaks and all yeah, that. Yeah, but, um, yeah. So we're that's a lot. Some, we had to pay some bills. Come back. Yeah. Oh, we were <laughs> actually. Hey, would you like a pop and a wheel? <laughs> that was another thing. That Come Dave, on down to Papa Wheelies. Dave. Dave, that's the right. programmer said. He said we don't take a break to pay bills. Yeah. We don't say we're taking a break. We don't say we're coming right back. Mm-hmm. It's just next. Yeah. Next, it's this. Next, it's that. We don't do any of the other stuff. I'm like, okay. He's mm-hmm. like, no coming up. Mm-hmm. No around the corner. None of that. Next. Coming like, at you. Coming at you next. Coming through your speakers. And I'm like, okay, okay, I get it. I totally understand. Unless you're Bob McCowan. Unless you're Bob, Bob Then you can, can do, say whatever the fuck you want. Bob can do whatever he wants. <laughs> Bob's on a different level. Again, he's Bob's like Mike. You can do whatever you want at that point. You've oh, made it. Sorry, that's another thing. Again, I'm in the airport. It's the day before we're going on the radio, and I checked my texts with Adam, and I'm thinking to myself, wow, that's crazy that we're leading into Bob McCowan. No. Nope. I worse. thought we were doing one to four. <laughs> I thought we were filling in for JD and Bennis. Why did you think that? I Because I'm wrong. <laughs> I was did wrong. Did no one tell you you were <laughs> I don't know why I assumed for two weeks that that's what we were doing, but then I found out, oh, we're doing 9 to 12. Oh, I have to get up very early tomorrow. <laughs> oh, God. I'm grateful we're not leading into Bob. That would have been too much yeah. pressure on the first yeah. show. No. Bob, if anybody doesn't know, Bob McCowan is is pretty much the, the biggest sports radio personality in the history of Canadian radio, mm-hmm. and we did not want to lead into him. That would be a lot. Hi, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> That's the greeting I would have got. <laughs> um, hey, so you know, like, what I've. Are we going to talk about Steve's trips to Scotland? We are, but after. Okay. Let's I get mean, to actual sports news. Oh, whatever. So, <laughs> you know, let's I mean, talk damn, about. man. Like, we've been doing the show for like 45 minutes. I know. We should probably get into the Leafs stuff. That's what uh, I'm saying, right? Because, you know, and, and there's other stuff. Panarin too. is in Scotland right now. Well, so here's, here's the funny part Elliot Friedman is a bit of a, a silent assassin. Mm. And it's not because, I don't know if he tries. I don't think he tries. If he does, you wouldn't know it. Mm. But when he was on the NHL Network earlier this week, and by the way, the NHL Network still broadcasts in the summer. Who knew? Hey. Um, they don't just turn off the network. Well, I would. <laughs> what are you doing? You just shut down well, a TV channel. Let's have a Julius Honka debate. It's August 2nd. Like, For what? three months, it's just Jackie Redman doing a peace sign. <laughs> no footage, no highlights, no nothing. Well, yeah, but like run do reruns or whatever. You know, like, what are you going to do? No, anyway, no. so they had live shows, and Elliot Friedman's on, and he's got his Friedman beard, which he'll have to, you know, shave for Hockey Night in Canada come October. And he drops a bit of a bomb. And, and what's funny about this bomb is it wasn't a bomb. No, it wasn't news, was it? It wasn't news. It was speculation. Mm. And he said this. He said, I'm just taking a guess at this. But he said there were two teams that could take a swing in Artemi Pernar. And some background here. He's already told the Columbus <coughs> Blue Jackets that they're... This is, this is what's very strange about this for me. He's told them, apparently... That he's not, he doesn't want to do an extension with them. He want to, he wants to test the free agent waters next year. Yeah. Then he set a deadline for September thirteenth 
that all business off the ice must be done by then. Which is a weird date. Or, yeah, maybe the start of training camp, whatever. Oh, um, yeah. There you uh, go. Training camp. But, you know, by weird. the start of training camp, all off the ice business must, must cease. But what's weird is that if you're not going to sign an extension, why set the date? Basic, I don't know, trade me by this date, damn it. I, I don't really understand. Well, that wouldn't even work either. He doesn't have a no trade. So uh, so what's interesting then, so that tells me that he is open for an extension. Is it a threat to go back to Russia? No. No, man, he's not going back to Russia. No, uh-huh. he, it's, it's, I think what it is is that they're, they're playing hardball with Columbus and going, show us the money. Uh, and Yarmo Kekalainen flew to meet him in Paris, which I guess would be... The, nice. The, it was Nice. Yes. Uh, so it was the halfway point between <laughs> Russia and North America, I guess. Uh, Is that why? <laughs> I don't know. They met in Nice. Um, and I guess discussed some things. So that, that's a, already it's a very funny situation. And then Elliot Friedman said, you know, if there were a couple teams that we see taking a swing at one year of Artemi Panarin, it's the San Jose Sharks and the Toronto Maple Leafs. What, how, how, how would the Leafs do that? The Sharks make some sense because the Sharks are one of the teams, like Dallas too, who wanted Tavares and left some room for Tavares and didn't get Tavares. So now they got this room. Well, the Leafs also, got them. Don't forget with the Sharks too, they, they struck out on Kovalchuk. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, they struck out on... Uh, there were a bunch of teams who struck out several times, but the Sharks came out of it easily the best. Like mm-hmm. they were fine to begin with. But like... Montreal just whiffed on like three guys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there were a few other teams as well. Dallas Dallas is still, they got a ton of room. They They're kind of incomplete. They're off the books, but they also have. The Devils have signed Jamie like ben to one re-sign. guy. Sorry? Jamie, they have, or no, it's Sagan and Ben. Don't they have to resign them? Yeah, so that's, people were like, all right, and on to the next one. Next summer is all about Tyler Sagan. Yep. By the way, I don't. I I actually don't know that we could fit Tyler Sagan under the cap in the Leafs. So no, we also, ca- unless he plays wing <laughs> defenseman. You guys. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> so I I I was trying to figure out ways that this could get done, and I I I can tell you this. I don't think the Leafs have the luxury right now that Tampa Bay does. Tampa Bay's done a really smart thing. They've done millions of really smart things because Steve Eiserman is Steve Eiserman. But yeah. one of the things Tampa did really well was they drafted extremely well. And when they failed, when their seasons didn't go well, they ended up with guys like Victor Hedman. Well, and, and they made the trade like uh, McDonough and Miller mm-hmm. where they gave up a lot of futures because they had it. Right. And, and so my point is they've, along that line, They've got stars, like legitimate stars, Stamkos, Kucherov. I could go down the list, yep. right? Vasilevsky is a great goalie. Hedman's yep. a, you know, a, a perennial Norris candidate, whatever. In that system, they also have a lot of high-end talent, prospects. Jonathan Drouin somehow ended up in Tampa Bay, which got them Sergachev. Yep. So you got Sergachev either as a guy who's your defenseman of the future or a trade piece for now if you want to trade future wins for current, for current day wins. Right. And what I find very fascinating is this this thought in Toronto that we have this pipeline of of talent. No. Quite frankly, no. right now, we have a lower end system. And that's not to say that the development people are not great. A lot of graduation. But the the amount of graduation, because the Leafs, quite frankly, had nothing three years ago. They had a bare cupboard yeah. and they had a terrible team. Yeah. So they've they had they took this cupboard, they filled it up, everybody went everybody graduated. Oh my god, when does that ever happen? I still remember and, I want to say it was 2013 when I was writing for the leafsnation.com. We had to we did the top 20 Leafs prospects. Oui. And I had Josh Levo ranked second. Where was Matt Finn? <laughs> I think the next year he was second. Oh. He was oh. No, no. Sorry, I think Matt Finn ended up second. I had Levo ranked second. And I think Riley was ranked first or something. Wow. Because obviously. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, and I have to, I'm going to shout out Tom, uh, uh, Tom Hunter at Puck Don't Lie on, on Twitter. He's, a, uh, he's an interesting follow there. He, he, I'll give Tom this. He's got an opinion and he sticks to it. But one thing he said last year, which I was like, no, nah, that doesn't seem right at the time was he said beyond Lilligren, their farm team's a bit of a dog's breakfast. And, and, and I, at the time, was like, well, no, it's not. And I don't think he counted on, I don't think anybody counted on the way 
Andreas Janssen would develop and the way that Travis Dermott would develop. Those two have been an unbelievable Very good. jump. Or even like... And I don't think he considered Kappen in a prospect at that point. Because we all Moore, thought at that point he was going to make the Pierre team. Pierre Engvall. Like, okay, we're Leaf fans. Yep. So we talk very optimistically about our prospects. Uh, I am optimistic Trevor Moore could be something. I'm optimistic Pierre Engvall could be something. Uh, there's probably a few other guys. Jeremy Bracco. Mm-hmm. But if you go to Columbus and go, we'll give you Engvall, Bracco, and Moore, they'll throw the phone in a lake. And never speak to you ever again. Yeah. Like, those are maybes. We need, like, who did who did Tampa give up? Give up? They, had, they had to give up Nemestikov, who was a guy off their roster. Who's now in the KHL. And I'm trying to, <laughs> no, didn't he? I thought he resigned. I think he went to the KHL. I think he threatened to go to the KHL, oh. and that's how he got more money. Jesse, can we look that up? Sure. Yeah. I think he resigned. I want to say he resigned for four million bucks. Oh, okay. Something like that. Names. Nemestikov. That's how I remember how to spell it. Same. <laughs> name it's stick weird, off. right? It's, it's yeah. literally name and then stick nick off. Anyways. Uh, uh, sorry, continue. Yeah, no, so they had and to give picks. up guys off their roster and then like previous second and first round picks and picks. Mm-hmm. The Leafs can't do all that. Not, they don't, not yet. They don't have the assets. And no. and I think Tom's tweet would be a little more accurate this year. Again, I think dog's breakfast is a little extreme. Yeah. But if you were to if you were to look at the system, you know, if Scott Wheeler is to be believed, and I think he he is, I don't know if there's anybody that watches more Marley's hockey than that guy. Um, you know, Lilligren is Kyle Dubas. at least Sir. at least a year, if not eighteen months away. And yep. You know, maybe he gets a couple games this year, but you can't expect him to be a part of the lineup. And I, I think that because of the amount of graduation, the sheer volume of people who moved up over years, over these, well, over the yeah. last three years, yeah, the team doesn't have the assets to go and spend on a guy like Artemi Panarin, okay. unless you're giving up roster players. And then if you're giving up roster players, who you want to give up? And like Tampa wasn't, Tampa didn't have nothing. Even when they were bad, they didn't have nothing. The Leafs had nothing. Nothing. They had What's Riley it? and Kadri and JVR. Like the, the, we want to know about uh, where Riley? is he? Nemestikov. Where oh, is he? New York. Oh, he, he resigned with the Rangers. Yeah. Was it two years? Four? Two years for a per. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Steve Dangle with that yeah. savant memory for only hockey. For and nothing else. And nothing else. Um, Not schedule making. So, to me, it makes a lot of sense that San Jose would do this. They struck out on Tavares. They were close on Tavares. Struck out on Kovalchuk. I think Kovalchuk just wanted to go to Los Angeles. Like, like yeah. I think they lost the city battle there. Yeah. Now, you might go, well, wait a sec. You just said the Leafs don't really have the assets. What about the Sharks? Well, the Sharks, there's incentive to go for it, I think. Like, they, all, they can overspend assets that, that you know, uh, I, I would think that their window's closing soon. It looks that way. Unless they replenish. I would argue that, eh, Nah, Joe Thornton's like the sun setting there. The sun setting there. I think I really and, think and the Mar- Sharks Mark should go Edward for it. Vlasic like thirty three. A uh, lot of their core. Brent like, Burns is like thirty three. I look at the Kings, and I just go, the Sharks are just a few years ahead. Like they even got the uh, the goalie. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. But Martin Jones is a better goalie. I feel like San, that makes San Jose better longer. Right, but what I'm what I'm saying is they were once, you know, one one A and one B oh, or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah, in LA. You. Um, but no, they got this aging core that's good, but it's going to get old and mm-hmm. it's going to be really expensive when it's old and it's going to be old kind of soon. Yeah. They also don't have a first round pick this season. San Jose, what? Evander Kent? Yes. Because they resigned him. Yes. For seven years. Yeah. So, I mean, they would have to, it would be significant to, I mean, it's going to be significant no matter how you cut it for Artemi Panarin. To me, Columbus is also in a position where this might be go for it time for them. Like mm. how it how much sense does it actually like and again I know Elliot was just speculating so I'm not and I understand the whole rep- recouping assets. I'm the guy that's like squarely on the if we can try to try to get your right-handed D somehow with Jake Gardner and if you can't keep him because he's Jake freaking Gardner. Um but w- with a guy like Artemi Panarin who is what a top 5 winger in the league uh, you, easily probably he's, he's one of on the, most first lines. Yes, he, he is. is a, like, tell me, if, give me a first line where he's not playing. Yeah, his his raw statistics are amazing. His possession numbers are darling. He's extremely good. So, if you are going to lose that player, maybe 
do you then just trade him? I feel like yeah. Yar- whatever happened in that meeting in Nice, I, if I'm Yarmo Kekalainen and I know he's not going to re-sign, or at least yet, he's not going to sign an extension yet, I go, all right, do we have a chance? Do we have a chance? Because if we don't, if he goes to you, you know what, I don't like Columbus, or you know what, I don't like John Tortorella, or you know, I don't know what he, you know, I don't like the color blue. Like, whatever what it is. Yeah. Um, if, you, if that's what it is, and I don't think it's any of those things, um, then, then you, as a general manager, I think you got to make a move. But well, if you are, if, if you're like, hey, we're still in this, and can't they offer more? Isn't it? Isn't well, more years, they yeah. Can more, they can offer eight years, right? Yeah. So at the end of the day, player's going to take... Most of the time, player takes the money. Um, he's also twenty, like five, six. No, really? I think he's older. Because well, we were yelling about him being like twenty four when he won the Calder. Mm-hmm. I think he's like you know how we're talking about how like Paralyn- twenty six, twenty seven in October. Yeah, he's Pierre Lindholm's age. Might be older. Yeah, twenty. Don Tavares' age, right? Yeah, what, what year? I'm trying to think of what year would have been his draft year. Nineteen ninety one. That's like, yeah, Tavares' draft year, yeah. I think you're right. Not 1991. Born in 1991, everyone. Right, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. 2009 would have been his draft year, my bad. You said Columbus, <clears throat> sorry, two straight first-round exits. Yes. Do you have to make the second round this year? Is that yes. pressure on that organization, or do people not care enough about the Jackets internally that they'll give them time to develop? Um, I think, like, you, j- just going back on, like, some of the things Doug McLean has said about that team, like, we keep thinking about other teams in the context of the Toronto Maple Leafs, mm-hmm. where yeah. they can just spend and spend and not have to worry about the money at all. Like, Columbus has to worry about those things. A little bit. And if you say, like, we're just going to blow the doors off mm-hmm. and leave ourselves completely vulnerable, and if we fail, we might suck. I don't know if ownership would go for that. I think they would much rather trade this guy and get the assets. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and, and you know, he's, on a, he's the highest paid player on the team at $6 million. Yeah. Which is a sweetheart deal. That is you also very have good. Zach Marinsky coming off his ELC um, uh, this year after after this year. And is there a better defense pairing right now than Seth Jones and Zach Marinsky? Like it's just one of the best defense pairings in the league. I'm trying to think of uh, the guys they have in the system. You mind if I look? Yeah, right? I'm sorry. Why, give Sergey Bobrovsky <laughs> in net is very good. They have some. Sorry, Bobrovsky is the highest paid on the team. Oh, they got Abramov. Yeah, no, they're 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 gonna be fine. They, they got some assets. I I if I were them, I'd trade Panarin and Lodop. No, that's not me trying to go. Hey, let's get them to the Leafs. Now, okay, I hate doing this. I hate it, but it's July. Screw it. If you want or Timmy Panarin, what are you giving up? Ooh. Oh God, if you're the Leafs, yeah. What is the package, man? Because if we're oh, going for the Leafs, if yeah. I'm the Leafs, I don't trade. I don't for trade. Him. For no, no, but I don't know why you lock up six. Jesse, if you do that, play this year. play the game. If you if no, you if have. I'm playing the game, I say there's another team who will give me better assets. Because if the Leafs get him, we can't give up what another team because because we don't have. It that would have assets. to be like it would have to be obnoxious. You're yeah. talking like Janssen, Kapanen, first pick prospect. And we're not doing that. Really? Yes. Well, think about Panarin's nah, output. His output's going to be better than Janssen and Kapanen together. But Janssen and Kapanen give you. Some pretty amazing. If you're if you're Columbus, that's what I'm asking. So, for. so Panera not our first line left winger on this team. Yeah. He, yes. Yes. So you're tra- you have to give up everything to get that. Man, man, that's so that's two young cost controlled roster players, mm-hmm. a first and a prospect. But you're acknowledging that neither of those players, and we I think we know this, neither of those players will ever turn into Artemi Panarin. Mm-hmm. So their top end is not as high. So that's why you have to give up a couple of them. Yeah. Like but, if, if, but they're if, also the type if, of player that the Leafs need. If Kapanen is, is a 40-point guy yeah. in regularly, if he's a 20-20 guy, that's pretty much the best we can... And, and a killer pe- penalty killer, right? He's such a strange player. Like, we all agree he's sick. Like, he's got wicked skill. He's fast. You can use him on the power play if you really want. He's a good penalty Probably killer. Probably fastest skater on the team. Probably fastest skater on the team. Easily. And what, what do we think the max points he gets in the league is? 40. <laughs> Like, like, and people rip on Zach Hyman for that. Mm. But like, in terms of point production, like, I mean, we don't know, man. The way he had break out, breakaways in the playoffs last year, I'm inclined to think he could do 50 or 60 in the regular he season. Might but, sneak one thirty, but goal not season, in his current in his role. No, no, and yeah. especially on the right. He's got to be a top six guy. Yeah, he's got to be a top six guy to get that. And I think he might get that. Like, okay, so I'm looking at the right wings that that uh, that Columbus actually has. And if we're doing the hypothetical, this is what we're. Yeah, you got Cam Atkinson. Okay, good player. 
You got Riley Nash, who's probably signed as a center, but can play right. Oh yeah, wing. they added this off season. Yeah. I forgot about that. And they, the Riley Nash was a good pickup. Two point seven five million yeah, for three did, years. That's did nothing. Okay. That's great. They did okay. Uh, Nick Foligno is a right winger. Boston lost a lot. They did. Um, Sorry, and yeah. then you've got Josh Anderson, who obviously held out last year, and Oliver Bjorkstrand. So, you know, I think that you're... And William Carlson. All of a sudden, Kapanen. Oh. All of a sudden, Kapanen becomes a pretty good player on that. That's a... No. I just, I love him, though. <laughs> That's the thing. When I you know. ask us what it would I know, take, and I'm thinking, like, I'm thinking like Rasmus Sandin, this year's first, and then, and then two roster players. Oof. And that's a lot. And I don't, but our Josh team, Levo is our, our Temi Pinar not worth it. Mm-hmm. And then for San Jose, I don't know. I just don't know their system well. There enough. is the Leafs get Panarin. Like I'm thinking, regardless of what they gave up, there is no better offense in the league. There isn't. No, is not. Like that. That's insane. You're talking about a top line of Panarin, Matthews, Nylander. Saying it out loud is ridiculous. It's preposterous. And then your second line is like Marlowe, Tavares, Marner. Like, who have I forgotten? And then you've got... Kadri, and who gives a shit? Kadri, Brown. <laughs> Kadri, um, Brown, like Levo? I don't know. Did you bring up Hyman? Oh, Hyman. yeah, Hyman. You didn't put him on. Kadri, Kadri, Brown. Kadri, Brown, Hyman is an annoying line. Mm-hmm. And then your fourth line is Lindholm and... Uh, Levo. Who and cares? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah they're Levo, never going to see us. the ice. <laughs> your fourth line is literally anybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah us. us. I will sign an ELC. <laughs> I will make 900 grand and sit in the press box. McElhaney is on the fourth line. <laughs> Imagine being in the high five line on the bench. Like, yeah, uh, for an NHL goal, that'd be sick. Man. I. <laughs> but we're all in agreement that we'd rather see the Leafs spend the assets in a different way. I think, or keep I, them, I just or don't think the Leafs them. are in that, 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 ro- that range. Mm-hmm. I just don't think that they have it. I, and I think that's why I kept saying going into this draft how pivotal it was that they hit on some of these things. Mm-hmm. Because... They've graduated so many people that it's created a vacuum. There's no one left. Yeah. Exactly. And you've got some good veterans with the Marlies, but you don't want veterans with the Marlies. You want some good young players. Now, Bracco emerged. Some guys are tweeners. Yep. Like Rosen and Borgman are young, and they might turn into a serviceable guy. But again, that's bottom of your lineup. And they're lefty. Mm-hmm. Lefty. But those are like 4A guys to take right. a turn from baseball. Bingo. Right. Yeah. yeah. 4A so, guys. Yeah. yeah. Quadruple yeah. A. Um, the I learned that term when we did the radio. Did you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> did Jeff Blair say it? No, it was Wilner. Ah. It was Wilner. Uh, <laughs> Do you know about that? <laughs> Never heard about but, that? You know, it's, it is... Oh, and Pierre-Luc Dubois has got two more years on his ELC. Good for them. Uh, Columbus, to me... They're not in a bad position, oh, other than their star but, player is randomly asking for a trade. <laughs> right, but what's interesting about that is if they did get guys, if they were able to get a guy from... A t- I don't know what team this would come from, but if you're able to get a guy who... Um, like a, remember when Blake Wheeler left Boston? They got Blake Wheeler. In yeah, the Jets. And, then, and then they won the cup. Yeah, Jeez. but if you were able to get a guy like a Blake Wheeler, or you know Blake Wheeler before he was Blake Wheeler, mm-hmm. if you're able to get something like that from a team that's on their way up, and I don't know who it would be, so don't ask. Um, this team is set up to win two years from now. Bobrovsky's still going to be there, and if he's still playing well, that's well. Is he? He's got two more years left. Uh, let me see. He he is, he's twenty nine too, so he's not old. Yeah. But next year is a UFA. But you've got look at this. Look at this. Seth Jones twenty three. David Savard's twenty seven. Ryan Murray's twenty four. Uh, Zach Rowinski's twenty one. And that I'm just talking about the defense there. Then you've got uh, Marcus uh, Hanekainen. Oh, Hanekainen. There, Hanekainen. You've got okay. Wenberg, Boone Jenner, Riley Nash. Uh, Bjorkstrand, Josh Anderson, uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois, like all these guys are all under the age of 25. Not a lot of wow names, but like I'd agree like they're all good. Well, your wow I, is, I, I've your said wow this before, I hate the Blue Jackets. You're, they're a hard team to play against. Your I don't wow know. is defense. Your wow is Rowinski and Seth Jones. Mm. And that's where it starts. And then Panarin, Panarin's one of those guys that can net you a, a, a bunch of futures that could, could turn you into a really good team a couple years from oh, now. Oh, and future, or sorry, past Leaf Scott Harrington. Ah, remember that? Playing. Yes. I do remember that. He barely played for us. So, anyway, interesting thought. I just don't see... I don't know. I, what was the proposal you either you either came up with it or you read it or something? And it had to do with Gardner. Wasn't for it... Panarin? It, no, it was, it was a package of... Oh, God, I'm trying to remember exactly what it was. It made some sense. Or no, maybe it wasn't Panarin. 
No, it wasn't Panarin. It couldn't I'm be. trying to remember exactly what it was. I'm screwing it up. But that was that was the other name in terms of our mid July trade rumors oh, is what can Jake we Gardner. do with Jake Gardner? Well, if we, I didn't have it on the on the list, but we could talk about it. Um you know, Jake Gardner. Uh, I mean, we've talked no, about we've it, done before. it before. Yeah. Okay, then let's move on to William Nylander's, Nylander's contract. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, the, the latest news we have on that is is three weeks old. And that is Kyle Dubas on the 31 Thoughts podcast saying, we'll get them all signed, but we're going to be patient. Yeah, well, and that also doesn't mean they're all going to get max deals. No, exactly. Just, we'll get them signed. Yeah. Can I Can I bring up something that really annoyed me Yeah. regarding this Hell and, yeah. and Leafs Twitter? Let's sure. hear it. So... Oak underscore Leafs, active stick on... Oh, I have this tweet, too. Do you have this? It's my okay. favorite tweet. You read it. <laughs> no, 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 go ahead. No, do, no, no, you go. Do your setup. No, no, I want to hear the rage. Jesse, <laughs> you go, Jesse. <laughs> no, now it's... Uh, no, go. All go right. for it. Anyways. I have my peanut butter he and my des- bread. He decide. Are you really going to eat peanut butter? Yeah, on the have peanut butter. Live during show. So, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> what are you... So, active stick on July 17th. <laughs> what did that... Bastard say, Jesse. <laughs> Decided to tweet out, William Nylander's first NHL game was February 29th, 2016. Hmm. Here are, and here's the important information that's yeah. gonna make everything fine. Yeah. Here are the 21 forwards who have exceeded his totals in both goals and assists since that time. And yes, I'm gonna beat this dead horse into a goddamn pulp, is what he wrote. So basically, only Let's, 21 players have more points than William Nylander yeah, since and guess February. What? They're all really good. And, and they're all really good. Let me read off some of these guys. Yeah. One, Connor McDavid. Weird. Two, Crosby. Weird. Three, Kucherov. No fucking way. Four, Blake Wheeler. Five, mm. Patrick Kane. It's up to like the middle of the list. 13, Jamie Benn. 14, Andre no, Kovacar. Oh, <laughs> sorry, no. 18, Joe Pavelski. Hey. So this obviously means... That William Nylander deserves eight million dollars a year. Yeah, because ahead of him, only there's only 21 guys ahead of him, and a couple of them are Crosby and McDavid. No point per game. Nope. No context of games mystery. Here's anything. just points since he was in the league. Nylander comes in 22nd, and ahead of him is McDavid and Crosby. Hasn't Nylander only missed like one game in his NHL career or something like that? All I know is this is important, relevant information to Nylander's contract situation. Number and 10 or Temi it. Panarin. Why <laughs> acquire Panarin when you already have him? I always say. Him. So what did you guys think of that list? I think it's interesting, but there's a key distinction there. Mm. If you want to rate it on that, it's people that have both goals, both more goals and more assists. That doesn't mean more points. It's a confusing tweet. So <laughs> I love the what, heart of it. From what I understand, <laughs> Jesse and by the not. way, I still think if you were to put Nylander's points up against... All the people from that in that period, um, you would probably have a pretty good list still. Nylander is producing at a rate, as I said earlier and in another episode, just below what John Tavares was producing at, at at the same age. Going sure. to destroy teams this year. Nylander is going to be a phenomenal player. Yeah. Is a phenomenal player. We're just scratching the surface, and that's why everybody wants to trade him because they're they're silly. And if that's the point you're trying to make, I agree with you. But. When you say both goals and assists, it's a bit of a misnomer yeah. because just say points. There are yeah, <laughs> and the the points list would be bigger. Yes, hmm. that's why. Uh, so I mean, it's not hard to score more goals than William Nylander. He didn't. He scored twenty, but yeah. each year didn't he? But like he got twenty each year. It wasn't. He's not like Austin Matthews forty goals, um, but he did get like forty assists each year. And so why can't like just. Man, he's it good. Just just let him be good. Why, why do you have to? Okay, I love this. The, is I personally love that tweet. This is why it is very difficult to score more goals than him. Less difficult than the assist part. The assist part is the harder thing to do. But you cherry pick these, just this stat in this list to build some argument about Nylander being good. But you can make. You don't have to do this to show that he's good and deserves. Jesse, oh, so why are you having problems with somebody cherry picking for an <laughs> argument on Twitter? You? You are having some problem with the cherry picking of an argument. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Preposterous. <laughs> that you would ever pinpoint minute <laughs> things that don't really matter to the overall conversation to make your point. In his defense. I would never do that. And this is why I like the tweet. In his defense, to, to, to beat both is a lot. 
Mm. William Nylander has produced at a very high point rate. But if you were to say, like, who had more points, then you're going to have guys like Eric Carlson who beat him. Because Eric Carlson has a bazillion assets. And that's yeah. why none of this should be used in conversation. <laughs> no, well, wait, because maybe. if you took it as face value, you'd realize none of this no. should be brought up in conversation. See? See, here's the thing. We have found William Nylander's agent's burner account. Wait, Active oh, stick. Oh, there it is. It's his burner account. <laughs> there we go. Figured it See, out. no one thought it. Yes. But now we know. William Nylangelo. <laughs> That's how it goes. No, Angelo. That's not bad if you if you would commit it to it. Nilangelo. If you didn't fade off. You didn't commit it to it though. Yeah, you know that man. You gotta own own the failure. Um, (laughs) Listen, you're getting angry at face value. You're not taking into account the reason for this. Like, why? Why make something like this? And I think. Because it's, it's July 17th and you have nothing to talk about. That primarily, but secondarily, <laughs> I think I think it's because people are still trying to trade Nylander for defense. Are they? No, and you go, stop. gosh darn it, you don't understand the gem of a player. And to anyone who is fighting the good fight, for here's how good Nylander is and why you shouldn't trade him for defense. For anyone who's still doing that, no, you won. You what the GM said he's going to do it. You win. Mm-hmm. There's no debate. Mm-hmm. Stop worrying about it. Actually, funnily enough, and I don't know if you heard this, Jesse. Funnily wow. cake enough. Funnily, yeah, that's right. Funnily cake enough. <laughs> yeah. Canada's Wonderland favorite. L- um, <laughs> Lemon meringue. Steve and I, when we were talking to CJ, Other on the fan ah. of all places, Radio he said, Network. well, my colleagues at TSN have kind of tried to trade Nylander for a while now. <gasps> he said and that? I, and I was like, yes, they have. Ah! They're and That's he's like, awesome. he's like, well, I wouldn't go that far. Like, you know, Chris, he's very yeah. Fair. Then he's like, he I mean, back. Yeah, yeah, we've done it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he, and he's right. It's not like he would go up to Mark Masters and go, "Hey, shithead, <laughs> they're all friends." <laughs> Stop trading um, Nylander, you big idiot. And I like, wish he would. And it's yeah. not Masters. Masters wouldn't do that. No. I think. no. But Kipper tried to trade Marner and Nylander this year. Kipper, I think, is so much. And no, he there. didn't. <laughs> Stop that. He didn't try to trade Marner. He just said, he, I would, or something like, yeah, yeah, maybe he did. He's pushed it a little, Steve. <laughs> he said, Come I, on. If he doesn't have value to, I remember no, what it was he for said, Hannafin. if he doesn't have value yes. to your team, you should go get something that someone that does. Noah could have had a fin. I think he did it twice, didn't he? Did, he? Yeah. In the last year? Well, because Martin was playing on the fourth line at that yeah. point. It's so funny <laughs> to think, it's so funny to think that just this past season, several months ago, Marner and Nylander both spent significant time on the fourth line. Those players are so damn good. And, and if they, they struggle next year, they'll do they'll it again. on the fourth line. Because Babcock doesn't get Mar- um, <laughs> But anyway, regardless, Chris, yeah, sorry, Chris sorry. calling him out was very funny, I thought. Uh, but, you know, you have to be kind of, you have to be sort of we, we've nice. reached We've reached the point in the summer where I'm just, I've just started to watch random Leafs highlights for no good reason. You do that during the season. <laughs> I know. It's <laughs> not the point of this. What did you have, the 20 minutes of John Tavares highlights or something? Yeah. <laughs> Ten. Like February Ten. 23rd, and you're like, Why I just watched all of Austin Matthews' goals. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> what the <laughs> was a month ago? What are you talking about? In the middle of the Stanley Cup playoffs. No, it wasn't. It was like, ah. It was Let over. Just watch <laughs> Iggy, I am going to do something today. Actually, I'm going to that video. Ask me. Ask me. Iggy and Charlie. Don't bother, Dad. <laughs> Ah, uh, Dad's got oh, something to do. I, I, already get, get, I already took you guys out. <laughs> Let Dad watch his program. Dad, is I'm watching, watching my movies. Watching my stories. I'm watching my stories. Thank you. <laughs> I'm watching my Austin Matthews stories. See what's funny about the ten minutes and minutes of John Tavares' highlights? It should have been like, uh, I, I feel like it should have been 91 minutes. Don't oh, you? Yeah. Don't you think? You edit that then. <laughs> No. <laughs> Counterpoint, no, but someone should. Uh, good luck, everyone. That's and a challenge typical for today. hockey highlight on YouTube uh, style. You need to have like really bad metal. Yes. <laughs> Your friend's metal band. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, it, and it also, it, it can't be, you can't normalize the levels at all. No, it okay. Has to break the speakers. <laughs> Here's what I want 91 minute John Tavares highlight pack. All the music is wrestling themes. <laughs> Time to play the game. Can you do yeah. that, or would it get? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, well, you know, well, no, you you just have to be like. No, oh, you yeah, have to I, sing the wrestling themes yourself. <laughs> what you don't have? 
<laughs> you also don't have the rights to the highlights, ah. so who cares? <laughs> I don't think the NHL would be too, they don't mind too much, I don't think. But anyway. Um, At what minute does uh, the Undertaker's theme come in? At the end. Yeah. Chris Johnston did tell us, <laughs> just so you know, that this this contract extension talk could go right into training camp. And again, for anybody that, that might be wondering nervous. or worried about the Islanders coming in for their revenge, oh! they don't have their first round pick this year. So uh, they can't make a, an RFA offer for mm. William Nylander. Now, Jacob Truba went yeah, to arbitration but- and got a one-year $5.5 million contract. What's interesting about this is... The Jets went in at four. He went in at seven. They walk away right in the middle. Yeah. And the Jets have Seems 48 like an easy hours job. from... Yeah, from 48 hours from the ruling, about 24 hours from right now, to actually sign him now, or agree to the deal. Does I haven't Truba, heard any- is, it, Does Truba have an end of that bargain as well? Like, does he no. have to take it mm. if they agree? Uh, I believe so. All of those things, I was reading today, it seemed like they're going to just be a formality and he's going to accept it. Okay. Like nobody's concerned about whether or not this deal is going to be official. It seems like both sides are like, okay, this is done. I'm, I'm confused as to how it works a little bit. Because, like, I know that's how the Leafs ended up getting Clark MacArthur all those years ago, is he went to arbitration with the Thrashers. He asked for 2.4, which he was never going to get. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the Thrashers, I think, didn't even put in an offer mm-hmm. or whatever because they're just like, uh, no, we're, we're just going to lose this player. So he got awarded two point four, but awarded. He, it's not like he was it. given the money, but and the, then he signed one point one so, with the Leafs. So the Jets tweeted. I'm just looking at the Twitter account. They tweeted that he was awarded it, but they haven't tweeted whether or not he, they've that. actually signed him. That was weird. So I'm wondering right now if they're working on because they've got a few hours left. If they're working on a long term deal. So it's oh, that's Jets. what I would be doing. The Jets have 48 hours to decide if they want to accept the awardance. And then, or the, you can negotiate. The a deal. Winnipeg Sun wrote in their article that it's simply a formality at this point that they will accept the awardance of four. As they should, five point five for a right-handed D who's twenty-four. Get Truba? out. Of here. And then Truba He's... still has to sign the actual contract, which is also a thing within the forty-eight hour window. Oh. oh, and then that. So that's all what's kind of in the air. So you can't be like, "Hey, he resigned." Mm-hmm. Hasn't that, happened yet. If that adds anything. Well, to it. if I were if I were Kevin Shevel Day off, I would be looking at trying to get a, a long-term deal, but. If, if, and working on moving well, Myers, well, probably. it seems to be strange to me. And they've got a lot of problems going, coming up next year. I think this is if anybody takes a swing at our Temi Panarin, it should be the Jets. Um, <laughs> that wouldn't be fair. This is their good th- God, man. If there was ever a year, I'm pretty sure this is their year. Like, let's bring up their cap friendly. They've oh, got goodness. enormous problems next year, and it starts with. I don't know about problems. I think they oh, just, good problems. I think they just have a lot of work to do. You know yeah. what I mean? Problems like, problems is it I think that's work where you go, I don't see a resolution uh, here. No, it's not a problem. But your Blake Wheeler is a UFA. That could be tricky. Uh Patrick Line, Kyle Connor, also RFAs. Truba will be an RFA again. Uh, although Cat Friendly has has Truba listed as five point five, so must have I I, I don't know. Maybe know. that's just because cap friendly sometimes is like ah eh, yeah it'll happen p- pretty um, much and they can change it uh, and then you've also got uh, Tyler Myers who's a UFA and then you haven't signed <coughs> Morrissey yet Marco Dano is still an RFA I'm not sure if they're interested in that uh, but like guys like you know Kyle Connor and Patrick Line they're going to cost you big money Blake Wheeler's going to cost you big money Blake Wheeler's a tricky one because he's at like what how old is he. Wasn't he in the 2006 draft? I, I, think, I think Blake Wheeler's the kind of guy that, that ends up leaving. Like, kind of like Andrew Ladd. Oh, you think? No. Yeah. I think he stays. At 31? I think he stays, <laughs> but the odds of that contract sucking are kind of high. I think someone gives them way too much money, and they overpay for Yeah, Blake I think Wheeler. San Jose does. Next up. He's a f- perfect fit with San Jose. S- Joe Thornton's gone at the that Toronto point. The Toronto Maple Leafs. No. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Um, and the offer sheet line is. He's a right winger that makes $5.6 million already. Is he making less than he should? Who's this? Blake Wheeler. Sorry, I missed, I missed his name. Uh, oh my God. Not by yeah. much. No, that's a. Uh, right? What no, about that's, a, that's a wicked deal for what he did this past season. What do you think? Seven on the market? Eight Wasn't on the like market? He's like a 90 point player. Um, see, it's. Yeah, the age them, it makes it so difficult. That's, that's my point. Like, if you're them. And you're you're gonna have to give him terms. It's so dependent. Yeah, he's so dependent on guy for someone to overpay for someone to be like, hey, here's seven years, 
eight million, eight point five million. Come and he'll to us. give you great seasons. There's yeah. no question. But it's not like a Kyle like Pozo deal or a Matt Molson deal. Basically, well, anybody who played with Tavares on the island who signed anywhere else. Mm-hmm. And there's no like barring health issues. Like okay, yeah, Matt Molson. Maybe wasn't Ocposo the real deal. Ocposo had health issues. Ocposo was the real deal, but had health issues. Like, Wheeler is the real deal. But by the end anything. of his contract, the next one he signs, I assume it won't be the greatest. That's, that's, why, you, that's, what, you, that's, the, that's, that's what you pay for, right? You pay for that. Yeah. Yeah. You pay for those early well, He's years. the captain of that team, man. I think he sticks. Hopefully. I think he sticks. I like to see that for the Jets. Anyway, it's, it'll be interesting to see. If, if, if I'm them, this is the year I go for it. Go get our Timmy Panarin. Damn. I think they'd like another center. Like how they had Paul Stastny. That makes sense. Um, are we moving on to another topic? We are. Cool, I'm going to the bathroom. Oh, okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll pause. We can pause. <laughs> Along the lines of Jacob Truba. Jacob Truba. Jacob, y- Jacob Truba. <laughs> Turbo. Tur- Turbo. By the way, I, I'm, I'm always surprised by all the Jets fans that seem to hate him. It reminds me of Jake Gardner. Because he held out. Right? But they're like, actually, he sucks, and he's not worth five and a half. Yes, no, he is, and he, no, he doesn't. He requested a trade in 2016. I don't blame this, this isn't long ago. Because of the contract thing. They really, they, and then he signed for three million bucks a year, was it? Uh, yeah, and then they got really, really, really good. And I think he was happy that he didn't ask for that trade. Mm. Mm. So, if you are an RFA, Steve Dangle, Whoa. drafted three years ago. Rich, you're in the third season. Yes, of your of your NHL. It would be NHL 16 actually, but your third season in. Heck yes, I'm rich as heck. And you've made 925. Oh, and you've done really, really well. Done really, really well. You're an RFA now. It's mid July, but you have no arbitration rights Mm. because you don't write off your ELC. That's so business. That works. So what is the one and only thing? that can give an RFA true leverage in a contract negotiation year out of their ELC or when they don't have arbitration rights? Well, A, being Austin Matthews or Jack Eichel or something, or I guess sitting out. There's a third option. What, that? The team that you're on traded for you. As in, you became an RFA and they traded for you. We saw this with Jonathan Bernier. Yeah. Were the Leafs not going to sign Jonathan Bernier to a lot of money when they traded for Jonathan Bernier? Right. They kind of have to. They've already given up assets. And now Vesta kinda... Toscala prior to him. Yeah. And, yep. and the process repeats. The point is, you're going to have a ton of people, or you're going to have agents coming at you going, oh, well, you've given up all these assets. Obviously, you value my client, so pay up. Yeah. And I think that's exactly the situation we're dealing with. In not yet Calgary Flame, Noah Hannafin. Ah, uh-huh. now because they locked up Lindholm. Nothing's been reported on that, but they Lindholm was the guy in Carolina that went through a tremendous contract spat with the Carolina Hurricanes, which is the only reason he ended up getting traded. It's uh, they weren't probably looking the main to one, trade yeah. him, but they were like, "Well, we can't resign him." So Cal, sorry, Calgary, you, you have to take him. Please give us, you know, that that bum Dougie Hamilton. <laughs> We'll give, okay. you, we'll give you two lesser players. You give us Dougie Hamilton. Fair trade. We get the better guy, but fair trade. Noah Hannafin has not signed yet. They said they're going to be patient. But if you're Noah Hannafin, Jacob Truba just got $5.5 million. He's 24. You're 21. You maybe can't get $5.5 million. But what's my client? 80% of Jacob Trudeau. Ah, uh, yes. And he projects to be... Ah, the old McDavid be, argument. Mm. <laughs> Man, tail is all this time, though. He it pro- used to be Gretzky. You know, my client makes... Yeah. Uh, Gretzky makes a million. My client makes 75 grand. Now, surely my client is not Wayne Gretzky, but he's a third of him. Give him $300,000. And what is he, a fifth overall pick? Three years ago? Anything? Yes. Yes. He so, was right after Marner. So... Could have Hannafin. Could have Hannafin. Hashtag. So if, if Truba's making 5.5, could Hannafin make 3.5? 4? 3.5 is a deal. I feel like that's a deal. Dude, that's like uh, 4.5? That's yes. like Subban's uh, bridge deal with Montreal. That was 2.9? Oh, yeah. It was obnoxious. Real good. He won the Norris with that contract. Mm-hmm. On the lock, I was trying to say something. Uh, he was, was pretty like, damn good that year. You can't take that. They only from played him. like thirteen games, to be honest. Oh, stop it! <laughs> stop it, both of you! Stop uh, it! He deserved it. 
Ovechkin well, went north still had a 30 goal season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and struggled out of the gate, if you remember. And he did, yes. He, he got hot for like, I don't know, 20 games. <laughs> He's so stupid good. Steve would oh, not God. put him in the top Better five in the, in the NHL, though. Steve remember that time? <laughs> Remember, no. Remember when you did that an hour and a half ago? <laughs> oh, he's like the best goal scorer. Not top five. But, you know, there's more to it. No! What about Hart and Grit? Student and, of the game! Listen, he's only got one cup. He only won the one he's cup. He's only got one. <laughs> All right? I really think Kuznetsov drives that line. <laughs> <laughs> also, also, he's going to suck next year because he's still oh, hammered. Backstrom. Backstrom. There are different lines. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, sometimes he. Yeah, no, sometimes he's not the same line, but it's mainly Basham. I should have Tom said Wilson drives that Tom line. Wilson is the well, star Vetchen's of the Capitals. going to show up to training camp wasted. We are champions! <laughs> <laughs> Babes! What if he's, he's just, just retired? Ovechkin? And That'd stole funny. the cup. <laughs> stole it. <laughs> it's somewhere in the Kremlin in a vault, never so to be Hannafin seen again. Gets are you 80% of Jacob Truba if you're Noah Hannafin? You might even be higher. I'd, I'd say you're probably comparable. It's just he's younger. Mm-hmm. So and he has, and he has no leverage. And you're, except that he was traded to Calgary. So now they have to pay him. Yes. Because Calgary gave up Dougie Hamilton mm-hmm. and Adam Fox, too, who was not going to resign. But Adam Fox is a legitimate prospect. Yes. On defense. Freaking Carolina with their defense. Ridiculous. I'm trying to think of how old he is. It's funny, age is a very interesting thing. Like, all these young guys, like, I don't know. Like, if you play your cards right and sign, like, a really nice five-year deal or something like that, like, what does that take Hannafin to? 27. Takes him to his 26? prime. And, and if you nail it, which you should, you're Noah Hannafin, then you're in your prime, and you're in, like, Tavares-ish territory, and you can get the sun and the moon. So you sign two giant deals in your, really, in, rather than one. He's all. So, he's, like, don't go for eight right he's away. He's already turned twenty-one this year, so he's been playing since he was eighteen. Like he played from the yeah. draft year on. Yeah, I think so. So he's got a, quite a ways to go, though. Here, let me see his numbers. Let me see. His. Well, and don't look at his points numbers. I don't think he's a big. Yeah, that's not. No, that's but not I want to. I just want to see. Noah Hannafin had thirty-two points last year. I did not think he put up that many points. That's pretty good, man. That's pretty good. So, I don't know. Using Truba as a comparable isn't the greatest because of age, but like you're not totally far off. Mm-hmm. I think that's why it's an interesting thing. Maybe he wants long and Calgary wants short to keep it cheap. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. It's also very July hockey. It is very July, <laughs> but it's interesting, right? It's it, that's interesting stuff, and I feel like yeah, the Flames may be really in for it there because they already had to give a guy who gave his last team trouble. Money. Well, you talk about the heat on Columbus. Like, I, I don't think, I don't think there's legitimate heat on them. There's heat on the Flames. They need to have a good year. They got to make the playoffs for crying out loud. Well, they're too good not to. I said that last year, though. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think, man, you make a trade like you make moves like what they did. The trade they added in free agency. I love that James I, Neal contract, by the way. I know the last mm-hmm. couple of years might hurt them, but I think that was a really smart pickup. I don't know if making the playoffs is enough. Like, I think you got to win a round at least. They are good enough. Uh, of course they are. Well, and that's exactly what ownership is thinking. And I think that's exactly what management has told ownership. So and they if, better deliver. If they, have a, if they have a bad year this year, major older pieces on that team are going. Like, Giordano's on the market. A living market canned. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's they're 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 looking at, at at core pieces moving out. I'm not saying they'll blow it up and restart. I think what they would do is is trade some of their veterans and and build around Noah Hannafin and some of the younger guys. I'm not talking about obviously you're going to keep Gaudreau, you're going to keep Monahan. You might not, that. man. Maybe not. You, you might not. If you can get Kawhi, he's going to be yeah. free agent next summer. All right, Gaudreau and Monahan for Kawhi. Would you do it? <sighs> Leafs couldn't afford it. Whoa. Couldn't fit the money. I have, a, I have a comparable for you. Let's hear it. Thanks to Cap Friendly. Rasmus Ristolainen. Mm. At, uh, <laughs> in his contract year, same year as uh, Hannah Finn when he was 21. And they don't do possession stats in these yeah. arbitration hearings or whatever. No, not at all. No. Scored 41 points. And he got a. That's one, unbelievable. Two, it's three, four, five, six year, $5.4 million deal. Which he would not get today. 
We're agreed on that. But no, he might get he more. He just got forty points as a defenseman. Uh, it's, not, no, not that, last that year. Was, that, that was his contract his, year. His contract. So I'm oh! talking about. Yeah, he's gotten like precipitously worse. I was worse. like, what the? Okay. No, I'm okay. talking about if yeah. Hannafin put up that number this past year. If I'm doing this correctly, yes, it will be the same year. <laughs> Anyways, so, that's interesting. It's comparable because they're at the same point mm-hmm. at age 21. Did they have the same points? Ah. Uh? Yes, that was... Um, was 40 points for Hannafin? So Hannafin had... No, it was 32, I think. 32. It's, it's an Man, interesting he's comparable... he's going to get 4 million plus. It's he an interesting to. comparable because you go, well, look at this, it's similar. And then you ask any GM, like, wait, do you think that's a good deal, though? <laughs> no. Wait for a wrist lineup? Yeah. I don't think it's a great deal. No, at, it's no, not. At the, at age, the time? At age 21. They thought they were getting 41 a stud. points. Noah Hannafin at age 21 last season putting mm-hmm. up 30, what did we say, 31 and looking like he was a guy who's going to develop into one or two. Rissalainen, 21, putting up 41 points, looking like he's a guy who's going to develop into one or two. They give him 5.4. And Calgary's going to have to be careful. You go out, you give him 5.4. They're going to have to be careful be because his top end may not be as high as they once thought. I think they're thinking something like three or two times three. But you might not be that. able You're to pay him that. It. There's no way. You've just, given, you've just traded for him. You can't do that. But that's, again, that's why I think it's taken so long is that's what they're trying. Right. No, and it's going to have to go to I think they would have, if, if Calgary had their druthers, I think they would have had those both those guys sign within the week so they could do like mm-hmm. an official unveiling. Man, 24, oh, that's a really good point, Adam. With James Neal. But uh, at that guy's age, sign five or six years, bet on yourself. Mm-hmm. It's amazing that you're five in a position hour, you where know. five or six years is betting on yourself. And if you're if you're giving up that much time of your time, like if you're giving them that much term, your your number actually goes up at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like don't don't you're fight. A young guy. I would say if I were him, or if I was talking to him, and I don't know what he's thinking, like don't go for max term, dude. Mm-hmm. Like go into your prime, and let's not forget and that, kill it. You know, let's say you get five million. Let's say you get four point five. Twenty to twenty five million dollars is still twenty to twenty five million dollars guaranteed. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's funny. So you I know? was thinking about that the other day. What what can, can what can John Tavares do now with his money that he couldn't do before? Well, I don't think about he's thinking about that at all. No, but like <laughs> he doesn't seem seem like the type that would think about that. But. No, no. Wait, but what is Hold okay? On, okay, it doesn't have to be him specifically. What is so limited like, okay, to him? As in, say, like, how much can he? He could spend. He was making what five and a half. Yeah. So let's say a guy signs a five year. Th- Thirty million dollar contract, something like that. Yeah, and then at the end of that, he's making yeah, quick maths. Then at the end of that, he signs an eighty million dollar contract. So he's already made what what did I say? Thirty. He gets he's getting six point six million a year, and now he gets ten million dollars a year. What in their day to day life changes? Well, fifteen percent of that goes to escrow. Four or five percent, depending on the agency, goes to the agents. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got taxes. So escrow and agents, by the way, oh, that's before poor, right. taxes. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got, you know, say anywhere between 30 and 50% of taxes, depending upon your accountant and how good they are. And, I mean, you're so, still doing okay. So imaginary. He's making $6 million a year. Uh, let's say his take-home is Three. $1 million actual dollars. Fine. One. Cool? Yes. It'll Jesus, pro- that would be... Two okay, three million actual dollars. Yeah, so, so he takes home half. It takes home half. It's now still- he goes ten million. He's taking home five, or he's taking home six. Let's say because perc- the higher money is percentage yeah. is taking home is. Yeah. So he goes from six to three. That's a pretty big jump in lifestyle, I'd say. Yeah, I think so. Extra three million dollars a year. <laughs> You'd be like, surprised, man. Like yeah. think about think about the cost of a house, and not just buying the house, but running the house. When you get into the three four million dollar range in houses. You now start to have like a staff. You have people that come by and do your pool. You have people that come by and do your lawn. You have people that come by and clean your house. I'm just a peasant, it's like, man. Like, I I like, don't... So it, what's the cost I come from to run the house? <laughs> and and how, what kind of car do you want to drive? Yeah. Do you want to own a boat? And if you do, you realize that you're going to lose a pile of money on that boat. <laughs> so your initial question of how does his life, his life changes. I, you're, sure taking, changes. you're taking home an extra couple million dollars. There's yep. significance. I, I feel like his life doesn't change much. I feel like his children's lives yes. change a lot. The life life around him changes. Yes. 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 Yeah. Like it, it, you can, how much stuff do you own? Like how much stuff could you possibly own? You'd be surprised. I think back to the JJ Watt clip where he signed, I think it was, what was it? A hundred million dollar deal. And this reporter was laughing because he Googled, what do rich people buy? 
Because he didn't know. Like, what do you do with $100 million? It's a lot. What do you do? It's a lot. I think I could spend $100 million in like two hours. That's what Shaq was talking about. <laughs> Well, you, gotta, she, you gotta look up that Shaq's clip. Shaq's made the money. Man. <laughs> you gotta look Shaq, up Shaq that. did a good job. You man. gotta look up that clip of Shaq talking about like when he got an accountant when he was a young player. Mm-hmm. It's great. It's really good. Oh, okay. I'll look it up. Just I'll look it up. Look it up. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm not. Gonna, I was like, I could do the whole thing. Nope. Look it up. I got a couple hot takes for you. Oh yes. But he's talking about the off season that Toronto had, the off season that Philadelphia had. There was obviously some teams that are, St. Louis. Let's talk about a couple teams that St. I don't think Louis are getting enough. Looks so. They look scary. Sorry. For a team that traded Stasny, now to, to turn it around. Mm. Um, let's talk about, there's two off-seasons I want to shout out. The first one is Buffalo. I'm trying to think of what they did. good off-seasons? Good off-seasons. Mm. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna rely, I'm oh, going yeah. to give you all the people that are in and all the people that went out. And this doesn't include the draft. Start so with out. Do it. Out? Yeah. And this is, thank you to uh, Dom LeCision for, for coming up this for the ins and outs here. Um, Ryan O'Reilly out. Robin Leonard out, Oof. Chad Johnson out, Jacob Josephson done, uh, Benoit Pouliot, and Jordan Nolan gone. Okay, O'Reilly hurts, but other than that, not that. Like, big. Say the other guys. Leonard was a pain in the ass. Benoit Pouliot, who yeah, who's who's unfortunately been on the Oilers and the Sabers recently. Yikes! De- decent depth player, made too much money previously. Yeah, in your goalie, hopefully of the future, Carter Hutton. That's a bet, Connor Sheary. That's pretty good. Patrick Berglund, Vladimir Sabotka, Tage Thompson, former first round pick, right? And Matt Hunwick's contract, which you took on for because Pittsburgh needed to get not rid of Matt, it. No, not Matt Hunwick's contract. He's going to play for them, and oh. he's going to be one of their better. Defenders. He'll be one of their better defensemen for yeah. sure. Like it's a good move for them. But he, like, if, I'm interested in the Scandella Hunwick battle. Like they're going to have to battle for oh, ice. Oh man, I forgot Scandella. Scandella saber. <laughs> it's weird. He'll be great. Um, Watch that. Josh George is still a saber. No, I think he's expired. I Is think he's he? officially done now. I don't know. He turned down that trade to Toronto, though. Thank <laughs> Thank <goodness>. you, Josh. <laughs> Every team in a trade that gets the better player wins. So if <laughs> we go by that default, St. Louis won the Ryan O'Reilly trade. But- However... The problem in Buffalo is they had some good pieces like Ryan O'Reilly and nobody to play with them. They didn't really have a team. <laughs> and so Berglund is a former 20 goal scorer perennially. He had a bad year. Sabatka, they thought would be better, wasn't. He's going to have the opportunity to do it. So we'll see if Sabatka's actually anything. He's more of a depth guy in St. Louis. He's yes. got an opportunity to do more. And Tage Thompson said it himself I didn't get a chance. They didn't give me a chance. And what what Buffalo did, which I really, I'm still surprised more teams don't do this. It's not like, Buffalo's not a huge market. They're a big, they're a good hockey market. And the Pagulas have money. But let's not talk, let's they not pretend well that. They do well in ratings. They do absolutely. Really well. They're always yeah. top five in ratings and they're that sort of thing. They're always on the NBC games for a reason, because they draw. Mm-hmm. But to say that Buffalo's a large market in, 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 in the NHL is, it just wouldn't be true. They're just not. Sure. They are a intense market. It's weird. Mm-hmm. Like, like Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's not a large market. They're an mm-hmm. intense market. Yeah, Franken market. Yeah. I would call it. Yeah, there's a difference. There's big, a difference. Like Green Bay. Green Bay's a small market. Yeah. Intense fan base. But they're not a large market. Yeah. Bingo. Yeah. So, you know, the fact that they can spend this much is is fantastic. The weaponizing the cap to get Connor Sheary. And and listen, Matt Hunwick provides value, but let's focus on Connor Sheary for no, a second. No, Connor Sheary is Buffalo's get there. What a get. It's a decent get. What was it for? I don't even remember. It wasn't much. I, I don't. We can look up the trade, but you're basically it was Matt. Please take Matt Hunwick's contract so we can sign Jack Johnson. The Penguins got Jack Johnson for five years, three million bucks no. a year. Oh, five years. I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Ooh. <laughs> Connor Sherry and Matt Hunwick were traded to the Buffalo Sabers by the Pittsburgh Penguins for a conditional fourth round pick in the 2019 NHL Draft on Wednesday. Beautiful. Cheery, a 26-year-old forward, had 30 points in 79 games this season. That's A-OK for Buffalo. And That's two a, assists. In they had a good start. Wait, wait was, one more time. Hit me with it. What, the stats? Yeah, no, no, oh. the... No, no, the, uh, <laughs> the the irrelevant stats or the trade? The trade again. Connor Sheary and Matt Hunwick were traded to the Buffalo Sabres by the Pittsburgh Penguins for a conditional fourth round pick oh my God. in the 2019 NHL draft that's, on Wednesday. That's obnoxious. Yeah. I, a conditional fourth for Connor <laughs> Sheary alone would never happen anywhere. Would you I like to like know I the conditions? It. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, they are not listed. Whose pick was it? <laughs> wouldn't, no, well, wouldn't it be that one? 2019 fourth round pick. No, no, it'd be Pittsburgh. 
Oh, yes, I'm on the wrong. Yeah, so it would be this one. Yeah, that makes sense. Ah, I'm ah. dumb. Hey, I'm dumb. <laughs> Conditions. If Shiri scores 20 goals or totals 40 points, or if Hunwick is traded away before the 2019 draft, Pittsburgh upgrades to a 2019 third round pick. So it's either a fourth or a third. That's pretty good. I'd take that every day of the week. Not bad. Not bad at all. That's amazing. It's I, I said it, I think, on the last show. The uh the Leafs division has gotten better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now I'm not saying Buffalo's better than them, but to say they haven't gotten better. When you look at Buffalo on the schedule, you expect two points. Not now. When you look at Detroit on the schedule, you expect two points. Yes. Now I still don't think Detroit's great, but they got better too. I would say. How? I just think Zadina is going to be sick. Okay, but they didn't get better in any other way. I'm trying to think. And Dylan what did they Larkin do is still not signed. What did they do in net? You think Detroit's going to be good? No, Steve I think Larkin. they'll be better than they were. Which is still, that's not hard. Dude, it's a little bit of an improvement, right? <laughs> they, any improvement. <laughs> they took a nap. They could be better than they were last year. Like they, <laughs> like, like uh. Florida. Florida's going to be better. Well, that's true. Hmm. Man, they got the same team, only they added Vanek and brought back Mike Green. Yeah, I don't think... Dude, yeah, I don't you're right, they still stink. And they brought right, they still stink. Bernier, and Jimmy, Bernier and Jimmy Howard. They something. added a rookie. They suck. <laughs> Zadina's going to be a great so Never mind. But Buffalo got way better. Yes. They definitely got they, way better. They did. Now, is Buffalo a wild card team? Who knows? No. But I don't a, think so, a, but maybe. That's a much better team, and that is exactly the kind of stuff you want to do if you wanted to. Obviously, Rasmus Sand, or not Rasmus Sandy, Dalene. Rasmus Dalene. Dalene. Changes everything. That's a game changer. Yep. Him and Ristolainen on the first pair will be very interesting to watch. I bet he drives Ristolainen's did. numbers through the roof. But think about you know the, the fact that where Buffalo was at the start of last season. Mm. What, a, what a hole that was. They're a completely different team. One of the best things about Buffalo that we haven't brought up is three first round picks starting or in the 2019 draft. So this right. upcoming season, three first rounds. How round. did they get those again? Uh, I have no idea. Well, one of them had to be the was now it Ryan, you can go Ryan to O'Reilly trade. Uh, Sharks trade, which would be Evander Kane. Evander Kane. Kane, yeah, and then the St. Louis trade, which would Ryan be O'Reilly. Ryan O'Reilly. Interesting. So yeah, three That's first. You're going to add three first round players to your system and. Let's. Reinhardt had a good back half, if I remember correct. Mm-hmm. St. Louis, those those picks will probably both be in the twenties. I could still, but exist. I could see a world where San Jose maybe doesn't do very well. I could see a world. Yeah, mm, they both probably do. Well. I think Even they're both. If, listen, I'm like, saying they're I both. I think that's two playoff teams. But Agreed. We'll Even see. if it's a top ten pick, your own, and then two at twenty and twenty five, I'm taking that. Oh my god, yeah. Even if you wanted to trade one of those down and take a couple guys in the second round, the mm-hmm. Sabers are Oilers fans. They want, they, they want other teams in the Pacific to leapfrog the Sharks and push them out of a spot. <laughs> um, another hot take is the Coyotes killed it. And I'm going to run through who, went, who left. Like they killed it. Like they did a great job. It's funny. I think I didn't shut it off in Scotland, but like you're talking, uh, I, I don't remember what the Coyotes did at all. Yeah. So they out is Max Domi, Luke Shen, Jordan Martinuk, and Zach Rinaldo, who's bad. Uh, and going to make the Preds, by the way. In Galch, Grabner. Oh, yeah. And Vinny Hinostra. Hinostroza. Hinostroza, I think. Hinostroza. Yeah. That guy, Vinny Hinostra, is whatever his name is. How do you say it? Hinostroza. Hinostroza. Hinny. Yeah. H-Dog. What's, what's his first name? Vinny. Vinny? Vinny. Is it really Vinny? Yeah, Vinny Hinny. <laughs> See, I thought Hinostroza might be Italian. Ah, Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Ah. You got a good center in Galch. And by the way, they're finally going to play him at center. He's going to be a center on that team. Maybe. Hinnestroza, who's, who's, uh, his, his possession numbers are actually very interesting. You should, yes. His underlying stuff is very cool. Cheap player. Michael Grabner is the perfect guy for, for them. Yeah, you think? He's the perfect guy. He's going to play that system well because he's still so fast. He seems excited about it. I think there's a lot to be excited about there. Yeah. I, I think if you look at their second... And I, again, I, I'm going to Mike Wilner this. Throw out the first 38 games. Hmm. Like take, take the first 41 games of the Pred season... And throw them out. See, I know Jesse disagrees with I know you disagree. <laughs> I, I hate get that. It. I get it. It's but if you look at their back half, if they played a 90% of their back half, they're challenging for a playoff spot. I So they're clearly somewhere in the middle 
of uh, <laughs> there was a while where they were the second best team in the league over a, like a, it was but like a twenty or thirty game stretch too. So they're not <laughs> right. They're not of those. If you go by Jesse's argument, not to steal the words out of your mouth, I think it's that. Back half of the season, no one cared when they played the Coyotes. <laughs> they were already out, yeah. yeah. You, you're the worst team in the league. I, if you play well, it doesn't matter. And I think there's a great deal of truth to that. However, first half, I've talked about it before, it's dark magic. Like, it's when you when you get to your eighth loss in a row, <laughs> it starts to just eat your brain. And then they got to, like, didn't they lose... Like 19 of their first 20 or something just monstrous yes, like that? Yes. Jesse, can you look up their they're, schedule from last October? In, I, just, uh, I need to see it. They were they were out of it in the first eight games. Yes. Like yeah. Right out of the gate, they were out. Which is weird because we talked about them as a look out for the Coyotes. Look out. We talked about their top four on D. Mm-hmm. Looked really good. Through the first 20 games of the season, oh boy. the Arizona Arizona Coyotes had zero regulation wins. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And w- two overtime wins. Well, one overtime win, one shootout win, one shootout loss, and two overtime losses through 20 games. That is it's garbage. And the Undoubtly. 21st game of the season, they finally got their first regulation win over the Montreal Canadiens. And here, so here's, I'm looking at their roster right In now. In November. <laughs> 16th. Oh my God. Way, how is Gelch still, how is Gelch still only 24? It feels like mm. he's 82 with all the times we've the talked about. The 2012 draft, man. Holy. The 2012 draft aged a lot of people. <laughs> let's, let's. Dude, at- Yak is going to the KHL. Yeah, I know. I still, people talk about how he was a bust. I still say some of that is uh, how he was developed. I agree. You I agree. can't, no one who watched him in junior could tell me there's nothing there. Shut up. Let's keep this in mind too. But it's a little late. So the Coyotes also have, so they're, they're, you know, they're, their top center is Derek Stepan. Their second highest paid center is the last year of Dave Boland's contract. So he's <laughs> not, he won't be playing. That Thank God, again, the Leafs dodged that bullet. Um, You've also got Marion Hosa's contract in there too. But then you've got Galch, who can play any forward position and had to. And then you got Hinestroza and then Brad Richardson. And then you could do Nick Cousins. And then you've got... They got you know, guys coming up yeah, too. Yeah, Clayton Keller, Lawson Kraus, Dylan Strome, Brandon Perlini, Christian Dvorak. Like these are... I think Dylan Strome finally sticks. I think so year. too. I think he's, he's he had was to really good. a lot. Really good in the A. But like Christian Dvorak... The fact that Clayton Keller was the runaway favorite in the worst part of their season to be the Calder Trophy winner, you know, for the first half of the year, it was him. It was only him. He was the only guy scoring. And and so I I I, I feel like that like the Coyotes maybe they're not a playoff team. And Anti Ranta got hurt really not. early on. What's that? As well, Anti Ranta got hurt really early on. Yep. So there were two teams at the beginning of the season, both desert teams, as a matter of fact, who had no goalie. None! Grasping at straws! For some reason, Vegas kept winning mm-hmm. with their fourth guy. Coyotes did not. No. And then you've got... <laughs> They're Ekman, using guys I'd never heard of. On the left side, your top four is this on the left side. Ekman, Larson, Goligoski. And on your right side, Demers and Chalmerson. And Chalmerson had the season from hell as well. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I, I don't Adam, know. can I go out on a limb? And also Jacob Chikrin just happens to play for them too. Oh, and he was out like all season yep. too. Yep. Can I can I go out on a limb here? Go out on a go limb. On a, go on a limb. And say that. Did we both just do we're the both, same stupid joke we, for yeah. no good reason? Yeah. <laughs> we hang out way too much. That's we're, crazy. Because we're stupid for no good reason, my friend. Love you. Um, I think you're wrong. And the Arizona Coyotes will be terrible again and miss the playoffs and wow. probably have a top eight draft pick. That is, my, eight. that is my prediction. That is, a, really that is not bold. I, I had to think about it. That mm. is not bold. I think it's not even Dave bold. going against it's, someone is, who says that Arizona Coyotes will be Stanley Cup favorites. I didn't season. say that. No. <laughs> I, I think my prediction is pretty bold. I didn't say that. I did not say that. By the way, the Arizona Coyotes on their forwards do not have a contract that lasts beyond, if we're saying 2019, 2020 is, sorry, they don't have a contract that lasts more than the next three years. Gee. That's pretty good. 
Now they're going to have to resign a lot of these guys. Well, on it's ELC. pretty flexible. It's not necessarily uh, good. I think the Leafs good, have a lot of long term contracts, but they're good players. I think yeah. good teams have guys locked up because they ah, have good players, right? I think bad teams it's have weird. no guys on their team. The majority of Chaka's moves <laughs> as GM, I've liked, and they're still bad. Yeah. So maybe I'm just wrong. <laughs> could be, I think, I could think, be that. I, like, I think they could have a little luck, man. I, th- I think they could have a little luck, too. Yeah. But Jesse, surely you could acknowledge that there's something... You, supernatural. Don't say surely he has to acknowledge anything. You know you're not going to get the answer you're looking for. This is right. wheelhouse. <laughs> Let, wait. Stop throwing the ball right down the middle. Throw me a curveball, okay? Yeah. Sorry. Don't make it so easy. Surely a, a, a normal person would acknowledge. But. Let, let me uh, correct that. Jesse, I've made a mistake uh. <laughs> in thinking you can just play ball for once. What what was I about to acknowledge? You were going to say? I don't even remember. I'm so tired you're saying, now. You're remember when I started I all full of gusto and screaming? I'm tired now. Um, a couple <laughs> RFAs to keep an eye on, and then we'll do the press conference. First one, Mark Stone, Ottawa, made $3.5 million last year. He's 26 years old, and he's a year away from UFA. To me, if you're Ottawa, and you truly want to turn this around, trade Mark Stone. And trade Matt Duchesne, too, while you're at it. Well, so now the thing coming out is Eric Carlson would like to remain a sin. So I was going to get to that. Right. And I think that's a perfect tie-in, Steve. If you think there's a chance of that, no, you don't trade Mark Stone. If... I don't think so. First off, they have to trade Eric Carlson. And to clarify the comment, what Elliot Friedman did say, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit here, is you can, he would like to stay. He'd like to do it. Okay, Can I read it? Yeah, read it, please. Okay. All things being equal, he wants to be an Ottawa senator, but he doesn't want to be an Ottawa senator in this situation. So he doesn't want to be an Ottawa senator. I think <laughs> it's, yeah. I, yeah, it's, reading that, I think you're right. He, I think John Tavares would have liked to stay an Islander. All things being equal. <laughs> yeah. But, but all they are not. Yeah. New York being Toronto, he would like to stay in New York. So, John, what we're going to do is we're going to surround you, because I can't do a Lou Lemerel accent. We're going to surround you with Leo Komarov and Matt Martin. Yeah. Do you stay? So, John. All think about it. Just think. You know how we didn't make the playoffs last year? Well, if you stick around, we'll also the won't. same thing might happen again. <laughs> we also will not make the playoffs. Yeah. Or come to Toronto, come home. And do something crazy. Yeah, all right, I'll do that. <laughs> coconut water, uh, coconut water, add money. Here I come. Let's and go. And everybody else that wants them. And everyone else. So that I think my 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 point in that is that Eric Carlson. That means Eric Carlson wants to leave. It doesn't mean he wants he wanted to leave. It means that this situation sucks. And who the hell would stay? The subtext, <laughs> yeah, is I like Ottawa, but <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I don't Get a think new you owner. wait around for a new owner. No, like, that that's takes, not an option. It's yeah. like things that's are not like, like, hey, man, fire the coach. Yeah. yeah. The, 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 the thing's in escrow for 12 months, and, you're, and you can't spend. And like, he's yeah. 29, man. He's yeah. got to win now. He's got to go. That's well, a good example with the coach. If it was a coach thing, the coach can be fired in a second. And yes. You bring in someone new. And if that's the case, you fire a coach to keep Eric Carlson. But it's the owner of the whole damn team, and it's not happening. Nope. It's not that he has to win now. It's that he needs to put down his roots to win yeah. eventually. Yes. <laughs> Which San Jose, man. They're going to take a swing at Carlson or Panarin or both. They've struck out on too many people. Doug Wilson is going stir crazy. Yeah, you, Doug think, Armstrong- you think Ottawa's ever going to trade with San Jose ever again? Oh, right. So it's going to have to be Panarin. <laughs> yeah, that relationship's over. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's done. That's done. Well, enjoy the draft picks. Imagine Hoffman think- and Carlson were both traded to San Jose in the same year. After What, what if happens. they flipped them both? <laughs> what, Florida, we will give you Carlson. You give us Hoffman back for no reason. And, and Dale, uh, Dale just still telling us, like, uh, who yes. is this? <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> mom, stop it. Like, <laughs> My mom, she's a jokester. Is this Stan <laughs> Bowman again? <laughs> Take your rings and shut up, you smarmy. D- <laughs> he just hangs up. Uh, uh, William Carlson is still a restricted free agent. You bet. Million dollars last year, 40 goals. What a weird. What How the hell do you, do you give him? I don't, yeah. What do you do? What does an arbitrator to me, say? To me, I go, I go, I'll give you a one year deal and I'll pay you a little more than I think you're worth. Just do it What's again. That? Just prove yeah. it. Just prove it this again. wasn't prove an anomaly. Yeah. yeah. So I would say I'm going to give you a four and a half million dollar contract, like Kadri. Give me a pr- give me a prove it year. Yeah. And one then I'll year. sign you long term. Yeah. I don't sign that if I'm him. Man, I, I just scored 
over 40 goals. Once. You're giving me... So? I'm just telling you what I would do with yeah, George McPhee. Yeah, but if you give me a one-year contract, you're giving me more than four. $10 million? Dollars? Okay. Yes, I will sign. <laughs> <laughs> He's not no. getting that. That was my point. I'd say, what did you say, four and a half? I'm four being difficult. Half. I was going to say, like, you, you got to give him at least five. He scored over 40 goals. I'm not saying that's necessarily it's, worth it or a good idea. Bro, it, it, I'm just if saying. If I'm going over five, it's a, it's a, it's a one-year deal. I'd go six. It doesn't matter. Vegas has the room. Yeah. Someone. One year. I will give you one year. You show me. And I think he's got another year of restricted free agency after that. So there's not a lot of risk. You could go to arbitration, but I think you could actually make a case for mm. hanging on to it. One year, six. Done. Do we know when his arbitration date is? Because no. oh, they set it's all the dates, soon. didn't they? It's Montour is tomorrow. I don't know about Carlson. Car- and Montour is the next guy I want to get to. That day, I want to follow that. Yeah, that's, that's going to be interesting. Yeah. So how does this conversation go then? Let's say he signs for six years. Or sorry, sorry. Six mil, one year. Um, and then next year, he scores 25 goals. Then I say, that's you. Do you then go, I'll okay, now we'll sign you long term, but you're taking a pay cut? <laughs> yeah, but you're getting a long term deal. Mm-hmm. I mean, that to me sounds like adult and reasonable. And what's but 20- I just don't think that's how sports so works. So would you say, what, 25, <laughs> 25 goals and how many assists? How many assists did he have last year? Uh, 20? Th- let's say the same number. 30? 40? I don't even know. I can't remember. He had like 80 points. Oh, did he? Okay. <laughs> it was so stupid. Hockey DB says William Carlson <laughs> had 35 assists, wow. 78 points, 43 goals, almost 45. <laughs> That's crazy. The year before, <laughs> six. <laughs> six <laughs> he had, let's read this. For the Anaheim Ducks in 2014 15, he had two goals in 18 games. Man, that <laughs> player's got potential. He might be a future 15 goal scorer. Then to end that season, he went to he was traded to Columbus and scored one goal in three games. Hey. That's pretty good pace. Not hey. a big enough sample size, but pretty yeah, good man. pace. I mean that 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 <laughs> echoed his pace from this season. That's where his true <laughs> yeah, potential shown. That through. was you know what's great? Shorted his thirty three percent of the games he scored in. He had a goal and an assist for two points in three games. And last season in eighty two games, he had a better points per game. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. So in the just, 15, more ice time, the better he gets. In the 15 16 season, he had nine goals, 11 assists, 20 points. In how many games? 81. Ooh. I feel like so we've, done this, we've done this bit like nine times, yeah. and it's great every it's time. Still amazing. Have we done this? 16 know. 17 so. season for Columbus again. Six goals went down in production, ah. but he had 19 assists as Ooh. compared to 11 the year before. 25 points went up in point production. Well, clearly, if you're looking at math, it's an upward trajectory. Yep. He's always been going yeah. up. Then picked by Vegas in the expansion draft, he had 43 goals, 35 assists. In 82 games, 78 points. Now, I wonder without David Barron where that number goes. Um, I don't know if he was the straw that stirred the drink there, man. Uh, 43 goals. <laughs> Hot damn. It doesn't make sense. So even if he goes down, let's say he goes to 25 goals and 30 assists. You don't hate paying a player 5 million bucks for that, do you? No. Like, Okay. It's just, are you afraid he's a six goal player? Yeah. So well, you went from, I worry. <laughs> that's you, why I'm do doing a one year deal. I worry about that. I'll overpay little. you for one year. I want to see what you are. So if he scores six goals, if he, I might have the math wrong because I'm tired and also I don't know math. But um, if he goes up, if his goal scoring goes up by the same percentage that it went up <laughs> last year from six to 43, if it goes up by the same percentage, next year he'll score 308 goals. <laughs> ah. <laughs> That seems reasonable. Uh, seems reasonable. Pay him for that. <laughs> Most teams will not score that amount next year. Je- Jesse, can you do me a favor? Ah, bring up Nashville's hockey cap friendly, and bring up the the Ducks cap friendly. Because I want right. to move on to Brandon Montour as our third kind of guy that you want to pay attention to. I have to. them. Right-handed defenseman coming off his ELC. I think nine twenty-five arbitration tomorrow. Ducks have, from what I understand. Tell me if I'm wrong here. $19 million already committed to their defense. Their wow. defense at the bottom, it says 21. Ah, so probably more than 19. 21 million is what they have committed. Who do they right have committed well, to? They also have nine players listed. So it's they're probably, gonna, I think you're probably closer to right. They're going to get rid of some of these guys. Who do they have it co- committed to? Luke Shen, Jakob Larson. They signed Luke Shen. I forgot about that. They signed him. Corbidian Holzer, ex Maple Still Leaf. there. 
right? Yeah, you notice it's hanging on to him for uh, Andre or? Schuster, Josh Manson, Hampus Limholm, Cam Fowler, uh, Marcus Pedersen, Andy Walensky. Not a real person. <laughs> and Brandon uh, Montour. Those are those are the guys. Now, those BX is gone. Guys. Right. Fowler, um, Lindholm, and remember, they didn't have Lindholm for a big chunk of last year. Mm-hmm. Josh Manson. Andre Schuster, I think, is a recent addition. He is. He's a signing. Luke Shen's a recent, recent signing. Jakob Larson, I'm not going to lie. I don't know enough about. Luke Shen, I think, is a good add for 800 Gs anyway. Yeah, replacement level defenseman, Man, six that's, seven guy. That's a good core. And then With you Montour? got Montour on top of that. That's a good core. But, but, but gonna go it's down a lot of money. HL. If you're Brandon Montour, do you not look at the Truba deal and go, like yeah, how, how can an arbitrator not look at the Truba deal? How can you not look at Montour that? Montour get last? I don't. How good is Brandon Montour? I don't know. He's a, lot a, about he's a big minute defenseman. He's a big boy. He's right handed. He's young. There's another guy. Thirty two points. Solid Montour. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is that Absolutely. like that's just the number that's of pretty, points you get as an underrated defense? As you like, just you're on the ice for a couple. Well, of I, I'd like to see his <laughs> possession numbers, but yeah, you know, Montour is a guy that I don't know. that they when when they had that log jam, that was one of the pie in the sky people the Leafs Leafs fans wanted. Yeah, or maybe would somehow be surrendered to Vegas. Or, yeah, it ended up being Shea Theodore. The Ducks were like the most interesting team in that whole thing because they had all. It had to be a young defenseman. And then who did they end up losing? Oh yeah, it was um. Clayton Stoner. Yeah. <laughs> and and Shea Theodore. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. And I don't yeah, think yeah. Stoner did Stoner play? No. One of the two did not play. No. It was uh, Shea Theodore that played though. Yes. Interesting. Anyway, that'll be an interesting one to watch. That happens tomorrow at the time of this recording. Crazy. We're just looking at Montero's possession metrics. So my question is they're, they're okay. the reason I asked you to bring up Nashville's they're okay. Is what does Nashville have locked up in their defense core? Because they're considered widely probably the best in the league. Um, I mean, Carolina might be up there now with Dougie Hamilton, especially. But the best defense core to this point that's proven it, Carolina's not the best until they prove it. Exactly. Is 100% to me Nashville. They How have much money do they have wrapped up in those guys? 21 and seven guys. Subban, Yossi, Ekholm, Ellis, Yannick Weber. Matt Irwin and Anthony Batetto. And don't forget about Yamelin. Emily Alexi last Yamelin? year. No, 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 he was there last year. Not this year. He's gone. Oh, yeah. I was about the to say. Fired. Oh, okay. So anyway, it's uh it'll be very very interesting to see what happens with Brandon Montour. That is going to set the market I think for a little bit for a little while longer about, you know, who young right-handed defensemen and what they're going to make even in arbitration cases. It's the middle of the summer. If you're asking for great incredible stories, Brandon Montour arbitration is what you're going to get. Did Nashville do anything? I don't think that I guess Ellie Tolvin is sort of their ad. I don't think yeah. they need it to. I don't think that. What yeah, do you need well, to do? Just leave enough. it alone. Don't pick at it. Yeah, not run into the Jets. I think is yeah. what you need to do. Let's do the press conference. The Steve the press, press conference. conference. Most upvoted question. Mm. Hypothetically, let's say Jake Gardner and Nikita Zaitsev are now able to play opening night, and you need two players to fill in on the second line of defense. Who would you call up, and why? Me. That's from Balbasor Kifachu. So who always writes time. in good questions. One more time. <laughs> Hypothetically, mm-hmm. let's say Jakey Gardman and Nikita Zaitsev mm-hmm. aren't able to play opening night, and you need two players to fill in on the second line of defense. Who would you call up and why? So what's your Toronto Maple Leafs defense core look like if you take out Gardner and Zaitsev? Mm-hmm. Is basically well, okay. the, um, the question. Carrick Dermott, I guess, is your second pair. <laughs> um, Carrick Dermott, for sure. Yeah, and then... It's really about the third pairing, right? I well, guess so. Zhiganov. I don't know if I'd put Ozhiganov. I would put a Hall in there. I'd say Justin Hall and Ron Hainsey. No, well, no, Hainsey's, Hainsey's, Hainsey's up first with, line. Oh, Riley. Uh, yeah. uh, exactly, right? <laughs> uh, probably, so you're going to need a penalty killer. I'd say... Hainsey's uh, your penalty killer. I'd say Marinson. Yeah, but Zaitsev's another one. But you, want you need two, more than one, You want right? two rights? Back there, Hall and Marinson? No, Marinson, he plays right, but he's left-handed. Yeah. He can do both. Oh, okay. Okay. So you're calling up Marinson. I say Marinson. And who? Marinson and, uh, I, I said Ozhiganov. He says oh, Hall. Okay. Yeah, I don't think Ozhiganov. I say Ozhiganov is literally me, uh, like, picking the mystery box. Like, I have no idea. Yeah, like, that guy might be, be back in the KHL, like, by Halloween. Based on performance? Hall Rosen. You're keeping Marinson down? Marinchin 
to me is he's already not good at the NHL level. We know that his confidence is shaky. If I'm going wow. to play Marincin, <laughs> wow. we, it's true. Am I wrong? No, no, a lot of people are going, how dare you even talk about I Adam being close wow. to Ron? No, no, there's a lot of people who are super on your side right now. <laughs> I said, I'm not as convinced. but at, I said at the Marlies game, on the, at game five and at game seven when we went, or game six and game seven, whatever it was. Six and seven. I said, if Marincin played like this at the NHL level, I would be 100% fine with him being a Leaf next year. And he year. got like one call up this past year and stunk. So if, if, <laughs> and I was cheering for him well, so hard. I think the problem with Marincin is that I don't, I think the reaction times in the NHL are just too fast. Mm, and if, he, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Could but I, I would be much more comfortable with what I saw from Justin Hall or Hole, whatever we're calling him. Hall. And, and Callie Rosen. I really liked Callie Rosen. I was blown away by him in the playoffs. Rosen was real good. I am just willing to give Marinson another chance at the NHL level. Yeah. At a stable position where he's playing that every night in the, on the third line. Yeah. I'm willing to give if somebody goes down, I'm willing to give, give him 20 that. games. I'm willing sure. to give him that opportunity. Sure. And I think he's the first in line just because of time served. Not Justin Hall, who's 26 and has been in the organization Marincin's for years. 26. Been here for I give the guy that hasn't had the chance yet the chance. And I'll tell you why. You, you have a pretty good we, understanding of what Marincin is. Justin Hall, I'd like I'd like to see right out of the gate. Here's my guy. And I want to like, see I want to see what he does. He's like in his like mid to late twenties now. Twenty six. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he just said. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So you gotta like it's now or never, pretty much. Yeah. Let's let's see what he's got. I know what Marincin is. No, but do we know what he is after another year of development? Ah, oh, man, he's twenty six. How much development? Yeah. I like I don't know. Like, is he learning still? How much? It might just be confidence. You know? Or it might not be. I don't know. Um, and he might be learning, but like, is he a better athlete than he was the year before? I don't know. Like your well, body. Yours, Jesse? It accumulates miles, man. Um, so it'd be Riley Hainsey, Carrick Dermott. Yeah, and then I'm giving Morinson the shot, like I said. And then I, lo- I like your mystery box idea of Ozhiganov. I think. Because you I don't think, know. Man, just everybody's down on, on him. Yeah, but depending on how it goes in training camp, it could be something Could be something fun. Hey man, if he's it could good, be nothing. fantastic. Yeah, if he's good, then he's next in line. I but think. everything I've heard of, they're like, oh, he's yeah. not good. And you know like, who we forgot about? Why and didn't we sign him? Apparently he wasn't great at the end of the season, didn't play in the playoffs because he was hurt, mm-hmm. but he killed penalties this past season and looked good in, in spurts. Mm-hmm. Uh, Andreas Borgman. Man, I'm funny that no one, none of us said that. Andreas Borgman's another guy. I thought at the beginning of the season last year played really, really well, and apparently he just didn't like being sent down, so mm. it kind of killed his confidence well, a little bit, which I, I got, get that. I, I get thought, that. I thought he really started to hit a stride and like get confident and go on these crazy rushes, and then just had like a 5-10 to 10 game stretch where he sucked. He was so bad, and then they sent him down, and they're like, oh, he pouted after he... Got sent down. I'm like, I think he started pouting before that. Yeah. He wasn't very good, and I was a huge uh, champion of his. Yeah, I don't know, man. I can't say I, I blame him too much. Now, just listening to us, I'm like, okay, this is why people like keep ripping on the Leafs defense. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, but, Granted, we did take out their entire second pair, but and that would hurt any terrible. team. Yeah. None of, none of what we suggested is good. It's not a great, not, none are great options. We don't have good yeah. options. We don't but have how many teams? Court. How many teams right? could you be like, and your second pair, goodbye. Now fill it in, no problem. Yeah, it's true. How many teams could do that? Six? It's not a lot. Yeah. No, we're okay. I'm with you. We can score our goals. Next one. Yeah. Um, Josh Levo, question mark? <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> I'm going to say yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good answer. Yes. Here's how he gets in the I lineup. Agree. <laughs> yeah. Here's how he gets in the lineup next year. And I was thinking about this. It's Dubas's team now. Mm-hmm. They're already hyper into the sports science. They gave Connor Carrick a raise. Yeah, they got to. They had so many back to backs, and yep. they still have a bunch. I think they have less than the year before, but they still have a bunch. There's no reason not to play your spares if they're good enough. Now, some teams don't have good enough spares. Mm -hmm. The Leafs do. Play Tyler Ennis at home if you want. Give Levo his spot on the road. And then maybe next time switch it up or something. I don't know. I think that's maybe how he gets in the lineup. And if he can't get in the lineup that way, freaking 
This poor guy! I think if he just doesn't I get in the just, lineup, you don't get him. I can just, hear in your voice how much you care about Josh Levo getting into you know this why? lineup. Because, dude, he's a soldier. <laughs> he is the world's biggest Leaf amazing. fan. He's the world's <laughs> biggest Leaf fan. Any other player would be like, ah, get me out of here! But he's the world's biggest Leaf fan, and he wants to be a Leaf. He wants to win here. He wants yeah. to be here while the Leafs are good. I, he's in such a. You could tell. You could tell by his apology, sort of last mm-hmm. year when he, dude, I didn't ask for a trade. Look, they're finally good. And just don't fucking trade me. Oh my god! Like, he's such a Leaf fan. Mm-hmm. Josh Levo's the world's biggest Leaf fan. How do you not cheer for that? I just don't think. Remember when you're like play. Steve? You're the biggest Leafs fan. No, it's Josh, Josh Levo. Levo. Yeah, he's actually on the team. Yeah, they let me do stuff. <laughs> they don't let him do anything. <laughs> It's Josh Levo, okay. world's biggest Leaf fan. All right. So yep. your answer, regardless of context, is yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. I think he's, Josh Fido Levo? Question. I think he's in the fourth. Absolutely. Game. Fido question. Who's the uh, Leafs backup goalie on uh, game one? Oh, my God. <sighs> I would have said Calvin Pickard a month ago. I think it's going to be Garrett Sparks. Calvin Pickard. Wow, really? Just to be different? No, that's just what I think. What do you think will happen to Garrett Sparks? That's a great question, Adam. Okay. I don't know. I, it's, uh, Wait, oh. Bacalani? No, nah, Bacalani is going down. Yeah, and, and he had a, like a, what, he was a 934? Like, how do I, how do you send that I'm down? Taking, I'm taking Bacalani. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Back of goalie, start the season. No matter, okay, if they send any one of those three guys down, they get claimed. Even Bacalani. Mm-hmm. I Probably, think. yeah, hundred percent. I think. Probably. I was reading Maybe. um I don't know who it was on Twitter. They had a list of players who could be available on waivers at the beginning of the season. And that's when I realized I needed to get a life and it's July. <laughs> because that tweet actually got me excited. And I was trying to remember the names, but no. It's July twenty third. How dare I? Okay. September is when I'll care. Next show. Good to be back, boys. Good to be back. That was fun. I'm tired, but it was oh my fun. It was fun. All right, so uh, when are we going to be back? Next week, right? We do once a week. Yeah, it's once a week now. Until the start of the season. Unless yes. Steve books 8 million interviews like he did last September. We're going to have Ron <laughs> McLean, McLean and, and Ron Don Mc- Cherry. And Ron McLean's brother. We're going to have Don Cherry and Sid Sixero talk about the Hannafin Marner trade, Nick Caprios. <laughs> On the fan five. <laughs> Looking forward to that. <laughs> Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W Y L D E, and at Jesse Blake. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness.